What's going on, guys? Here we are, coming at you again. We've just full cal- screen. Full screening it because we've got a big announcement to make. We held a competition on our Twitter. This is from the Doctor Who video, which is in this one or any of the ones on Dick Picks. It's the main channel competition. We had a lot of submissions. Sam put together a random name generator, so it's going to be totally random. The winner so of if this you a really thoughtful message, it doesn't matter. But we read all the messages, and they were all funny and lovely and sweet. And thank you so much for wanting to win one of these. It means a lot that you would even want to win. It does, yeah. So, without further ado, Sam, calculate the winner. We're going to find out who wins. Look at that special effect. The winner is... Alexander Murdo 9. Alexander Murdo 9. Win Congratulations. Genie and the Boy Jumper. DM us on Twitter with your details and we will send it to. Or we'll DM you. Whatever, we'll sort it out. We'll figure it out. But, but congratulations, congrats, my friend. You deserve it. You do deserve it. You've earned it. Thank you for taking part. If you everyone, did apply. Thank you to everyone who took yeah. part in the competition. It was really fun for us and we're excited to ship out um, one of the jumpers. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about Zocta Who. That's what we're gonna do. But I wasn't done. Oh, well, he's, Sam's not done yet, though. I was gonna say, if you have ordered one, sorry, it's taken a while to ship out, but we're gonna do that soon this weekend. So we're gonna have them out soon. And sorry for the delay. I just thought that was necessary. Yeah, it's good to put that out there. Did Bosh. You, did you, should I cut it out? Did you not want me to say that? No, keep the struggle. Are you sure? Yeah, it's fine. No, because I could cut that out. Welcome to Peter season. Capaldi, season eight. <laughs> You're all dying to hear <laughs> me and Max Everyone's talk about. Like, oh, Peter Capaldi. What do you think of Peter Capaldi? What do you think of Peter Capaldi? And actually, before we get to that, we just want to mention something else. Just kidding. No, we are going to no. tell you right now. We like him a lot. With Peter Capaldi. You know, Christopher Eccleston is the doctor I grew up with. Peter Capaldi is my favorite doctor. I think, like, most people think that way now as well like back in the day no one seemed that excited about peter capaldi yeah but he crept i think he crept up on people and over time people have like really given it the time the and fan like, base is only just sort of realizing how amazing he is still and, and yeah um but he is literally like he's everything i always wanted in a modern doctor character basically it's like that this it was weird but because before we watched peter capaldi we'd come up with an idea for how we do the doctor yeah and it was weird how as it went on how many of the things that we wanted in a doctor yeah, came exactly. to fruition with capaldi yeah so he's, he's got more of that alien kind of vibe to him yeah. than matt smith david tennant and even yeah. christopher even eccleston. eccleston yeah he really does feel like an alien man he's he's the, he's such a good actor he's so good he's like really killing it which means that like he can make the schlockiest it. episodes work as well yeah what descri- best describes it is on youtube there's like loads of videos being like 10th doctor being goofy yeah 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 12 minutes 11th doctor's funniest moments or matt smith being socially awkward for 20 years or tenon being beautiful and then there's a youtube video which is isn't it just like peter capaldi acts for 18 minutes (laughs) that's exactly it's just a compilation of really good acting from (laughs) peter capaldi um which is warranted because he's he's a sick so actor. Did you see the premiere episode of um, Peter so, Capaldi? So this is what I was going to say. We're going to go to it now. Yeah, deep deep breath. breath. Directed by Ben Wheatley. Yeah, so I did Six see... Six out of ten. I saw this when it came out Me and too. I was like so disappointed mm. that... And I, I think at that time when I was like watching Doctor Who, as it was coming out, I was like really disenthused with... Um, with Doctor Who generally, uh, which was slightly unwarranted, I think, if I'd given it Considering time. Considering the six seasons we just had. Six season we just had. But I'd, or, I'd like skipped almost all of that except for Day of the Doctor. Um, yeah. And maybe Time of the Doctor, but I just knew so little about Matt Smith's Doctor that it really didn't resonate with me. But I was like, I really liked Capaldi's look and I thought it was really cast well. So I went in and gave Deep Breath a go. And... Um, I was like disappointed, and disappointed. This is the this is like the rough thing about Capaldi seasons is they like start week and end week, um, almost season ten, it, apart from ten. Yeah. But like other than that, it almost always does that. Yeah, um, eight and nine both do that. Yeah, they both start really badly. 
Well, I mean, Deep Breath isn't even that bad. We're giving it no, a No, Deep Breath isn't that it's bad. It's a lot better on the rewatch. It's a bit better. Well, because... With the because hype of the first Peter Capaldi episode. Yeah. And directed by Ben Wheatley. Especially when you go off the back of, like, 11th Hour being how Moffat, like, kick-started his season with Smith and how interesting that was. This was... It's It's got some really... Capaldi's really good in it, like, obviously. He's good in everything. And it's the scenes which he's in which are the best. Clara moping around is interesting. Do you not like the Silorian the scenes. Yeah, I hate it every time they bring in the Silorian. What's her name? Kathy. Yeah, Kathy. That's yeah. It. <laughs> the Silorian and her girlfriend and the Sontaran. Sontaran. Glib. The do- Glib. He's called Glib. Is he actually? No. Oh. He's called Strax. Oh yeah, that's. Is he? I don't know. Just, There's yeah. a Sontaran called Strax. I know that much. Yeah, but I find them not that interesting. Yeah, I don't know why Moffat always goes to them. I swear no. Gatus introduced them, but we could be wrong. No, no Moffat introduced them. He did, them, in yeah. the Crimson Horror. Isn't that when they're introduced? Uh, no, but they're also Gators. in the war one, the do- where Matt Smith oh. is like, I'm going to build an army and crush you all. But oh, deep, yeah. yeah, Deep Breath is like really forgettable, really. Yeah, it's I really funny. like the scene with Clara and him yeah, when so they both meet at the, the cafe, restaurant. Yeah. So the best thing, the be- the saving grace about this and the reason it's like a 6 out of 10 is because this has some really unique and fun like Capaldi moments in it which aren't had anywhere else uh, because the way he just is insane in this, like yeah, he's he really off on one. Yeah. Um, and that's really fun to watch. Um. I don't know if I really care that much about the whole like trying to make it make sense as to why his face matches the guy from from Volcano. Um, what is it called? Uh, Pompeii. Pompeii. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like I know Moffat's just like autistic and he just wants to make all the canon make sense. Don't but... they do that in um, season two where they really try and explain it more? Yeah, they try yeah. even more. Yeah. yeah. But um, but uh, I just don't care. I'm like, no. who cares? Like when Russell was doing it, he just said Martha went, yeah, my cousin, yeah, fought the Cybermen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was it. Moving on, yeah, and so, it, yeah. it it was a uh, and it's like, the, I, the story isn't that interesting. The, the villain. villains aren't. Uh, it's the clock cons- eye, isn't it? It's yeah, it's clock eye. <laughs> clock it's the guys yeah. wearing using human skin to make stuff, which sounds sinister and sounds like it should be interesting, yeah. but actually, like, isn't that interesting? It's really it's not, a, bad, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's really fun in places. In places, but yeah. it's also like dialed. It's not dialed up enough to be really fun. Yeah. So like the the scenes where it gets really fun is like like you said in the cafe scene where Capaldi's using all the hair and uh, like Clara and they're having this little weird squabbly relationship where she's like why did you call me into the restaurant he's like no I didn't I think someone yeah, else wanted us that's there good. that's a trap him stealing a homeless man's jacket's really funny I like that um I like uh, him killing the guy at the end or does he jump yeah up? no he kills the guy yeah. at the end. I I kind of like that it was a bit it was a bit Christmas invasion-y again <laughs> and I'm like you already did this in Christmas invasion no second chances it was that's it was what like, sort of doctor I am yeah yeah and then he is like very second chancey really but then he would never as well. But then he would never, never as yeah. well. No <laughs> second chances, but he would never. never. Yeah. <laughs> and these are Capaldi's, yeah. But um, what I like is oh, What sh- do you think about the Matt Smith phone call? Oh, you know, like, hello. It, it's a shame, that man. You're looking at is. Imagine if he ended up looking like a big toe, or like like he had like like loads of like nipples on his head. <laughs> he's like really regeneration I'm in the went really wrong, and he's like. Look, it's gonna be a whopper, I know, but just <laughs> trust me. And he's like eating shit, and, like, <laughs> and he's like, "No, Clara, that is me." <laughs> One of his eyes has yeah, popped yeah. out of his head, and he's like grabbing and her then ass. The Murray Gold music, like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, "Clara, who's that? Who are you talking to?" So, because one of the things that I like is like. The doctor it just seems like sorry. It just seems like he's just talking to the audience, being like, "Come yeah. on, guys! I know he's a bit old." Yeah. Well, because it's by that. I think in the Smith era, like so much of the fan base has been established around like his sex appeal a bit. Yeah. And it, that that's felt like at the time. But one Peter of the Capaldi's things that he's got been loads of sex. Appeal. He's got tons <laughs> of sex appeal. He's very sexy. But it had it had to be like, "Come on, give him a chance." Like Come on. to. Uh, which I don't think it needed, and actually it re- lessens the effects of. It Smith's totally season. does if Matt Smith has a scene in Peter Capaldi's first episode. Yeah, but, but then, then, but so, so there's things, there's things that I also think are cool, more fun about this season, and the fact that he kills the guy, even though I was like, oh, I was a bit of a retread. What I do like is 
in this season is used as actually a driving character arc for Capaldi. And that's one of the things that Moffat did with his Capaldi Doctor, which he didn't do with Smith, I think, or any of the other Doctors, is that each season Capaldi has like a different character arc. Um, and in this one, it's all about him coming to terms with what sort of doctor he is and actually he's you know him as a doctor is a bit freaked out by his insens insensitivity mm. um and so seeing that as part of his character and running with that whereas like Tennant it just flip-flops he go yeah, he'll yeah. kill someone and goes no second chance and go I would never and that's kind of just what the episode needs there and then um even though there's these narrative arcs as yeah, a character yeah. he actually whereas Capaldi's doctor is not a set of a character He's actually he develops through the season. Yeah, um, yeah he does. So it it's less it, it's less cringy because it's made right. a quintessential yeah. part of it. Yeah, I think, yeah. and that's I, cool. I pref I I really like Clara's and like Clara's chemistry with Peter Capaldi I, I, as well. And it's really fun exploring like it's really fun exploring her her dealing with the fact that he's an older guy. Yeah. Um and like how how almost like she gets criticized for that as a character in the story. That's fun. And, and seeing her get used to him and, and being a bit bitter about the fact yeah. that he regenerated is, is interesting. Sort of conceptually, there's so many interesting ways of like, oh, the way regeneration is treated in this is conceptually is quite interesting. It's a shame that like, actually like the narrative isn't that compelling overall. Yeah. Um, and um, you've got these other side characters, so you don't actually get to spend enough time with the interesting dynamic, which is how Clara is processing Capaldi's regeneration. Yeah, and yeah. actually the, you only get a couple of scenes which are that, and then they get swept quickly for more of this yeah. fast paced I just wish that ben, story. ben Wheatley as well was given something a bit bigger, a bit mm. meatier. Yeah. Because it's like, it's a shame. The guy's yeah. like really good. Yeah. And he's like, imagine like a Sightseers-esque mm. Doctor Who episode. Where, I where, like that. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there could have been a lot of like really good stuff. And again, this does have some good moments. And on the second watch, I, those became clear. Yeah. Um, which is it is a six out of ten. Like it's an but episode. There's no that particular works. scene that I hate in this. No, but there's, there's no there's none that I really love or I would like say is like in this entire season. There's Apart so many. From everything with Kathy. Oh yeah, she's Kathy. wonderful. Let's Kathy, move lizard on. woman. But yeah, moving on. Like six out of ten. Go into, into the, the dialogue. dialogue. This is more fun. Yeah. Um, this is this is really good. I, I love the opening of this episode. The open where Do he gets the girl it? with the coffee, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and he's like, she's like aggressive to him and he's like that's that's not the question is that <laughs> yeah, what yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's not, not the question, question. yeah yeah really good yeah. and I've, actually i think this is really like uh, uh, this is a really good what this does really well is like really lays out capaldi's doctor really nicely yeah and really clearly as well like it's really like aware of how it wants to sell capaldi to you and that certainty makes it really fun to watch yeah. and, it, and this love, has loads of great i love capaldi how he bits. doesn't give a shit when people die but it's like it's calculated. Yes. It's like he knows he couldn't save these certain people. It's like but reduced he kills risk. very little. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, it's just like at this point, Capaldi understand. Like Capaldi's doctor understands that that's how things have to go, but yeah. he's also trying his best to solve it. There's no point allowing these things to get in the it's way. Really it's it really whack. It is really whack. whack. Episode. Because the uh, this is like what's great is like almost so many of Capaldi's stories are so weird. Yeah. Um, because this is like his first Dalek episode. It's the second Dalek episode. It does. It's not well, it's a large. Like, Story. Normally in Doctor Who, when a character regenerates, the first is like is like this would be the equivalent of like New Earth, mm. and it's like so different. It's, it's so, so different. It's like starts off with him like he then grabs Clara to because yeah. he needs her to help him. Yeah. On this ship. Well, because he's still uncertain yeah. of himself, yeah. and then um and then I also like the fact that there's this this theme with Capaldi's Doctor of like trying to find humanity in the Daleks, yeah, and looking for humanity in them. It doesn't really go that to a very interesting place near the end but the introduction of it here i thought was really nice yeah, yeah. um and so, <laughs> the idea of a shrunken cavalli and this dalek and him talking to him and then you know this uh, you know the idea that how bitter capaldi's doctor is and how much that freaks him out is again really explored here you've got the girl from fresh meat who's also really yeah, fun she's in this. really good she should have been the doctor though. we wanted her to play the doctor we but she, she'd have been such a good female doctor um and uh, yeah, like all the interactions are tidy. It's snappy and it's like a new type of Dalek story as well. Yeah. Going inside the Dalek, looking at the Daleks, it, like inner workings is really interesting as well. Yeah, the biology. Yeah, you know, you I like it. it all. It's yeah. a seven out of ten. It's fun. It is fun. It is fun. It's just like good. And, Capa and Capaldi just, Capaldi's really good in this. I like, just, my, my main thing as well is that if you would go inside a Dalek, like 
could be a lot more like kind of horror esque. Yes, it seems a bit like just a standard sci fi corridor. It does, and yeah. it's like that that eye of detail of what the production design could have been. Mm. It's like that's where I feel like it could it's it lost some of its character more. actually. Yeah. Because then if you just look at Into the Dalek, it, it just looks like you're watching like a Doctor Who episode when they're in a spaceship and mm. things are trying to kill them. Yeah, yeah, The fact yeah. that they're in a Dalek doesn't really... You don't really feel that or see that yeah. very clearly. And I and I, I think Clara and Capaldi's relationship in this season is, like, really good. Yeah. I think it's, like, the best I think the Doctor and Clara get is in this first season. Um, yeah, because and Moffat's trying some really weird shit, isn't mm. he? Because I swear it's like cutting to Clara at school at the start and we get we are yeah, introduced to she, mr pink either in this one yeah. or the next one yeah yeah but it's like cutting in between that and it's showing a story over the season as well which is really yeah no different yeah this for is Doctor it Who. this has much more well planned out like our uh, season arcs yeah all of capaldi's run really has a lot of that in mind which makes it so much more enjoyable to watch because yeah each episode feels like to some degree the characters are learning something new either about themselves or about something they they took for granted so the doctor's like entire perception of a dalek like gets challenged and reframed and sort of re evaluated in this as well because he sees a dalek get emotional start to perceive beauty and stuff like that and and seeing him sort of get rid of that sense of like oh we can genocide Daleks and he's slowly starting to go away. Well, maybe there's an alternative path. Yeah, yeah. That's fun to see as well because that the Daleks needed something like that because otherwise every Dalek story ends with the doctor killing like all the Daleks, which is which how we, it usually which goes. Which is how it's normally Yeah, happening. it's like it almost always or, goes that way. But now recently it's someone else doing it and the doctor's going, no, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, what in this? Don't kill all the Daleks. Oh, yeah. Get the Daleks to destroy themselves. Yeah. Get the, oh, my weird no! clone. My weird my, clone of the myself. The clone of has myself. Done it. it wasn't uh, me though. <laughs> I couldn't have stopped him. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. I've already genocided. I wanted you to let all of them live. You come on. That's not, <laughs> that's not me. So yeah, yeah. um, it's I, good. I, I would actually have liked all it the... if they had found the spirit of jazz. Yeah. Hey. yeah, that is what <laughs> this is. It's just that mighty Bush yeah. episode. <laughs> I also think the um, army team in this are are pretty good. They're okay. They're a bit better than the angel, the one in Matt Smith's angel one where they go into the angel yeah. caves. I, I know they're well performed. Yeah, but I can't really remember much of like their character. I remember her, and I remember him. Uh, yeah, I remember them. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> but yeah. I don't remember what they, they do. Were die. About. They just die a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. And some of the Dalek antagonists, like the white blood cells and stuff, it was interesting. It's we a good are e- Vince. Again, it's like a yeah. solid episode, yeah. Yeah, seven out of ten. If you don't like it, I'm so sorry. But Capaldi's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Mark Gatiss. A, 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 A. We didn't know that Mark Gatiss wrote Cold War, so thank you to the person who commented. Yeah, because that, that is right. That is, that is his best one, because this, is trash. on the other hand, was probably when everyone... Was uh, like I've tap, seen tap. enough. Because of Capaldi the thing is, is now. like you have the two first Capaldi episodes, and like they're pretty okay and they're they're good, but like Capaldi is so much better than that in I other know, episodes, know, and yeah. they become so much more ambitious. It's just the fact that and Stephen so, Moffat and Mark Gatiss are mates. Yeah, like, they really just should like come on, just let someone else. Yeah, <laughs> right at this point. Yeah, like uh, Mark Gatiss, I know he probably could do better if his mate wasn't the person that gets to decide yeah. the quality of the script but like come on this is real trash this real is... real awful shit it's really like because because already like and it lets like, it lets the season down in it a big really way. does yeah. it really does and because the biggest problem is it's like it's very like pastiche but like not in an interesting or good way it's like they go to this time period but like they're playing on the fact that like robin robin hood isn't meant to be a real person which means he's really played up and it's very very like goofy and cartoonish um and it's like these weird robot aliens who are using all the gold to make their yeah, shit it's like the guy from armstrong and miller is like the villain oh yeah yeah what the and uh, he's also a robot I think. yeah 
something is something yeah. like some of them are robots but like all, almost all of this is like capaldi in like a dick measuring contest with robin, robin hood which yeah. doesn't even feel very appropriate for the type i uh, he's yeah, a big dick measuring well, yeah because clara wants to fuck robin hood yeah right? it, but it's so garishly done it's like yeah, not even it's like really interesting we've i've it's seen ver- this like too many times yeah. and so it makes it's, me you've seen sick. about it twice because yeah. like, there's so many times when it just they end up in and shouting out going, spoon. i do this he has a sword fight with him with a spoon and it's like it's one of those things which Doctor Who can do, which started in this Matt Smith era. I think it went into it, and it was I intense think it's as well. Pretty much, yeah. Could get to but this like, level. it's like it's like quirk over substance, where yeah. it's like wants to give you a bunch of like mishmashy, quirky sci-fi elements without actually justifying why they're all present, and actually people specifically working against their behavior, yeah. uh, their sort of. Characters. It might just be as well that everyone just is a bit sick of Robin Hood. And yeah, and the Robin Hood <laughs> setting is so bland <laughs> and like. I've never liked any Robin Hood story. Ever, there's there's so. a fucking scene where they have an archery contest. Yeah, and like, I know. It's like it's, it's straight it, from Brave. It's like every. It's straight from, it's Brave. Straight from Brave. Who threw uh, that arrow? I, I know. It's oh. like such it's such a common convention. Every Robin Hood has this, <laughs> and it just cycles through all these conventions that you like. You really don't want them to hit because you've seen them so many times. But this time the Doctor's doing it, but that doesn't change much about it. He's like robot arrow or whatever uh, it's explosive arrow in the oh no he uses sonic screwdriver to explode the the target which Did is you uh, know why we've given it a three and not a two why if you look at that picture you can see one of these people it's a bit bright very sexualized <laughs> and i think <laughs> you and i both got off on that i'm talking of course about peter capaldi yeah would peter fuck. capaldi would fuck um the robots are all right the road cool. the robots Design-ish. are all right Bad, m- bad motivation. I don't know. Everyone knows this one's shit. Yeah. No one's going to defend this one. No. Capa- if, if Capaldi. If you like this episode, uh, un- unsub and, unsub and, and uh, tweet the tweet your really head. horrible abuse at us. Like really yeah. deconstruct us <laughs> physically and as people. Yeah. And just say something really, really like actually try to hurt our feelings. <laughs> if you d- liked this episode. <laughs> Because I don't That's value your opinion anyway. Yeah. So if you manage to hurt it, maybe there's something I missed. But I doubt it. But if you agree with us, then uh, we do, do you, value why, your opinion. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Stay sub. Listen. So, yes. Thank God. Moffat comes out. And thank you so much to the person that found my childhood story. Oh, yeah. That Sam Moffat was really actually stoked. wrote. Sam was Call really happy about the that. Eye. I can't believe that was Moffat who wrote that. You have to read it. I'm going to read right. it to you. Oh, good. Yeah, Maybe I should it. read it on here. All of it. <laughs> no. Did A you find reading. it, though? Yeah, yeah. Corner of your eye. Yeah. It's online. It's you, sick. You actually want to do a reading on here? How well, long is it? I wouldn't mind. Oh, right, maybe. Pretty, it'll we'll be see. like 10 minutes. We'll see how we get on because we yeah. do these. We'll do it our is, like two hours yeah. long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're running out of dick pics content, really. We're on oh, season yeah. eight at this point. Yeah, that's right. What else are we going to make? going um what about what Torch about would break down <laughs> every, every episode keep of saturating with powerpoint one. presentation video one out of ten <laughs> two out of ten sarah jane chronicles sarah jane chronicles max, every episode max goes max and sam play top trumps with train tickets that's good that's something we actually, actually have done. Do, do all the time. Um, it's a shame anyway, Listen li- comes after. Listen. Ro- yeah. yeah, it's a shame Listen comes after a robot of Sherwood. I saw this as it came out, and I was like, <gasps> were you Doctor like, Who's finally good again. Because like, I think I actually tapped out after Robot of yeah. Sherwood. Yeah, I, like genuinely, fair I, mean, enough, I imagine enough, a bunch man. of people did. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, but this is a classic. fucking superb. Yeah. It's yeah. so fucking good. Um, it's it's just so. Like, it's even just, if you don't like Clara, like. This is what I can imagine people won't like this one because it's yeah. got Danny Pink in it yeah. quite a lot. But he's such an essential oh, part of the story yeah. and it's so well balanced. And we're seeing time travel shit like work in such a new way in terms yeah. of Doctor Who. It's like really elevates Doctor Who as a piece of narrative because it starts off with um, with this fucking monologue. Yeah. With Peter Capaldi going around all across like because they keep making planets. Capaldi monologue. Yeah. <laughs> Capaldi and is the like, doctor of monologues, and it's amazing. But it's, it's always research. So good. Yeah. And it's, then and he's, it's any time you get Capaldi on a, a blackboard is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And then we see Clara on a date with Danny Pink, and that is just that is a really well written like kind of awkward yes, date. Yes, it is. And it's, it's intercutting really well with written. Clara being upset and at home. Yes. And reflecting on it, yeah. which is also really nice. Really good symmetry, real great writing. And then Capaldi comes in and he's all like, 
your, you've taken your makeup off. And she's like, no, I haven't. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. their interactions are really funny yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And there's that really great shot of Capaldi meditating on top of his exactly, TARDIS, which yeah. is just sick. But, yeah, and then it gets to a point where he's getting Clara involved in the scheme, and then the Danny Pink shit is like, mutating into it yes and then it's like it's just really it's really, really good. and it and is yeah. it's you know because this is a is, this is a doctor who episode without a monster like the only like monster in it is like the doctor's nature of obsession and how he can get obsessed and it, it's an exploration of that as well as what he's his fear and what he's scared of and where that comes from um and um it's such an interestingly vulnerable episode where the doctor never really seems vulnerable in it until yeah, like yeah. right at the end and actually clara gives off a really decent monologue she as does well. well yeah and like she's just repeating what the doctor told yeah but her before. performance of it i think is actually yeah, really well done i think well jenna done. coleman is a good actor she is I a good actor no 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 she is it's when she's it's got the, the right fan material. base like it's weird the fan base really overtly sexualize her and they're like, they? Clara's fit. I love her. Yeah. Or they're like, I hate Clara. No one's ever like, Clara's all right. She's good. Like, she's yeah. decent. Like, she's like... Where would you rate... To- all right, quickly. Go through yeah. the top companions of the okay. UK. Okay. Um, no hesitation. Bill's number one. Number one. Uh, Bill is number one. Cool. Number two. Donna's number two. Number three. Uh, probably uh, probably um, Amy Pond. Yeah. Is, is Rory a companion? Should I count him in that? No, just the women. Just the women. <laughs> Amy Pond. Then Martha. Um... Oh, I put Clara above Rose above Martha, above. and then Rose, then Martha maybe. You put you've really underrated Martha. She's my favorite. <laughs> I, li- I, do, I do I do feel bad about that. I do feel Martha's a bit unsung to a degree. Yeah, but someone's got to be at the bottom. Someone does have to be at the bottom because all of them are good in different my, ways. They all bring in something interesting. Yeah, because mine would probably be yeah number one. Uh, season two, Rose. Yeah, number two. Season two, Ro- <laughs> number two. <laughs> I just like her. She's cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? She just really Mom. likes traveling. I don't dig it. Oh, it's just so. F- it's so like. <laughs> and it becomes one. so just de- Rose. All right, just becomes, Rose. Rose is your number one. Rose is my number one. Yeah. Oh, all right. Number two. Uh, Martha. Martha. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Clara. Uh, are you specifically like? I was just putting in command. All right. Number four. Uh. Wait, who else is there? Amy Pond. Yeah, number five. I've said Martha. Um, you haven't said Bill. I haven't said Donna either. Or Donna. Donna. <laughs> then Bill. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Did she just give the opposite of mine, basically? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I don't. They're all good. They are all good, in it different ways. Um, we can't rank it. things forever. No, Every, and then yeah. Capaldi interacting with the young kid is really good. But like, what's fun about this episode is it is just a whole episode of them hopping about time. As Capaldi tries to chase this thing, they go uh, to the end of time, and they go to when this guy's a kid, um, and uh, yeah, and they, then they go to like Capaldi when he's a child. A little barnyard. And I do like yeah. the balls of just like a. It's like it's such a one-off episode. This really exists on its own, mm-hmm. and it's like such a ballsy thing to have a one-off episode where they have a character go to Gallifrey and interact with a young boy doctor, and that just be like the episode. Well, it's it's a, nothing. Not thematically larger. Thematically, the stuff with Danny is really important for the season finale yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the stuff with Danny is also linked as well with this idea of fear mm. and, like, because the date is not going well because yeah. they're both scared of yeah. scared of shit. It's all really good. It's I think we should move good. on, though. Yeah, 9 out of 10. 9 it's out really, of 10. really, really fucking good. Time heist. Time heist, man. Time heist. I always, I always like... You love time heist. Oh, man, it's so fun. <laughs> it is. So this is like, this is like that goofy camp... Is this camp- as well? I don't know. I don't it's know. It's someone. Yeah, it's yeah. someone. But this is like that. This is like Doctor Who going to that camp extreme and it like really mm-hmm. working. This yeah. is really fun sci fi. Really, proper really action. Proper yeah. action. Yeah. Like, it's an actual time. It's an actual <laughs> heist episode with time travel <laughs> elements. Like that. And it all really works come, and comes I can't together. I believe it took them this long to, to do a heist. A heist uh, episode. I know, but I'm so it, glad it, that it's this one. And I love because they got like the two extra characters. Is it three? Uh, there's definitely two because there's the guy who can upload things into his mind he's si- K-9's cybernetic. in it K-9's in it and then there's the woman who can shapeshift it is just two it's and just K-9. the two of them and K-9 whatever because he steals the jewels oh yeah that's right oh and then he like, affirmative yeah and then doesn't he try and fuck Clara no they that? have a thing oh <laughs> 
<laughs> she changes his oil. The doctor gets jealous. Yeah, he's like, what are you doing? And he rough. kicks him out of the TARDIS. And it's that's brilliant. the last we see of K-9. It's sad that they ended it so bitterly. I know, but he did, He does go evil at the end. So yeah, no, he, he does. Deserves it. But uh, I like the fucking cyber guy and I like the shapeshifter and they both have little arcs and yeah. they both have like little traumas and that happen to them. you think they die, but they don't. And you think they die, and but they, they don't. don't. The monster who can like mush people's brains is like he's the right... Sick. He's the right mix he of... Looks so he looks good. so good. And it's the right mix of like disturbing and weird and, and funny. And then Peter is the one who organised the time. The time And this is his fifth episode. So they've already made him like really hardcore. <laughs> yeah. I needed to think they were dead. Yeah. You see? <laughs> <laughs> and he sets up the heist like by watching a hat. It's so smart. Yeah, it's yeah. so clever. Um, and ten out of ten. And the th- okay, eight out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the design is really good as well. I really like how the whole. I, um, I really rate all of it. It is just it's actually fucking proper good, really isn't good. It? It's yeah. really good. Why are we only uh, give it an actually, eight? Um, because it's a bit cheesy. It's a bit. It can, I think it can get a bit goofy at points, and yeah. it's a bit predictable. I think yeah. you see the Doctor yeah, planning you it. You do see, see it off but quite if you're early. A kid, uh, but also, is... do you know who's also really sick in this? Is the woman, the bit, the head honcho, who's like, the main one. We're yeah. gonna get rid of him. Like she's really uh, charismatic like her, yeah. in that. Because isn't that she asked him to do it? Her older self asked him to do it. Yes. For when her. she was dying. Yeah, yeah, and she's got loads of clones of herself, and she yeah. keeps killing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how good is that? Like, that there's insane. so many fun this is little proper things. Doctor Who. Like, yeah. And al- also, like the thing, the 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 thing they're actually heisting, like the treasure rooms are also really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a little bit uh, Wizard of Ozzy as yeah, well. Yeah. It draws cues from that. Oh, and also they they've get, got like, to not be. They've got to not. They've got to hide their feeling about something because it, it yeah. can smell. Yeah, they've got to f- start stun smell. their emotions. What can it smell like? Secrets. It, it, or yeah, it's if you're hiding something. Yeah, it's, it's something, something like, like that. that because yeah. they also each get like a reward that ties into what they've been through. Yeah, what they, he and gets the, his memory back. Yeah. Yeah, the shapeshifter gets uh, something to stop her shapeshifter. Special cream, I think, that she can rub. Can, yeah. And what does canine get? Uh, canine, <laughs> canine, <laughs> canine, canine gets biscuits. wings. Oh yeah, wings. <laughs> so he can fly. Yeah, it's yeah. his upgrade. Because he really wants to fly. It was his dream. Yeah. Um, and also the doctor, because he's had his memory wiped by worms as well, which yeah, is they've fun. All been they've all been memory wiped, wiped by it worms. It was the doctor who did that. Yeah, right? but it's really fun watching the doctor like have amnesia and be like yeah. figuring and, things out yeah, and yeah. like using his sort of w- skills of deduction when he can't remember anything is really good. Wonderful. It's Eight fucking out of 10. good because it's like we, it, they don't have to figure out the plan as they're doing it. Like they don't know they have to just like figure it out. They don't have a plan going. Yeah, in. they have to figure it out. They have to guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and keep finding shit. Yeah, but Peter, the doctors just figured it all out. Yes, yeah. that's right. It's really great. I it's love really it. Really good. Yeah. Love it, love check it, it, love it. Check it. Check it. What's next? The, the caretaker. caretaker. Oh, this is fun. This is really fun. I love, I love like. Peter so, Capaldi with kids. Peter Capaldi with kids is really good. Look at that picture. That's a good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's, it is good, isn't it? Because you go. Yeah. So and this is the proper Danny Pink episode where he's all like invisible in the TARDIS. Yes. And he's like, I know what you're doing. And again, like I think the Danny Pink Clara stuff is quite interesting. It's the most interesting in Clara stuff. And it's like really it's inter- more interesting than last season. It's really interesting for the companion's partner to have a, someone who's actually challenges the Doctor yeah. really, like, yeah, yeah. really clearly, and you can really understand what Danny Pink's concerns are. Yeah, like he's not like he isn't like a Rory. He's not like a weak, pathetic person. Yeah, like he's he's very much like look. Like, he's a, I really like him. No, yeah, he's well lot, performed. Actually, yeah, yeah, he's really well performed. And then the he's doc- cute as well. Yeah, and then he's got like a fem- not. He's got no, like he's got a sensitivity. Sensitivity to but him. But he's yeah. he understands. Who he yeah. is and confidence as well. Yeah, yeah. Like you could definitely, he's you definitely going to You can see why Clara and him get on as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Chemistry. They do have key I chemistry. Ship them. I ship I like them. It, it works. Yeah. And in season eight, it's all kind of functional and good. Like yeah, it yeah, is yeah. really nice. And he's sneaking around. He's a caretaker. He's <laughs> got something saying the no fir- humans it's, it's or the humans first, go away. It's the first doctor who's like really shit at like, <laughs> like performing and disguise. Like yeah, yeah. Tennant's really good at pretending to be human, but like Capaldi's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm really good at this. Don't worry, I do it all the time. And then he shows up and he's like, shit at pretending. Yeah. to be a human is that really yeah, yeah. bait yeah. and everyone's like oh he's a bit weird yeah. isn't he and he's like yes I'm a human and it's really fun to watch him <laughs> do that great, yeah. and he's got really great like comedic timing uh, the robot's a bit like silly yeah, what is it? Who it's like is, a destructive it's a, machine it's like on the big, loose. It's like a big ro it's really like, it's like a classic tank. It's, it's, like, really it's really like, classic. It's really classic. It kinda reminds me of um the first Tom Baker episode yeah, a bit. Robot. Like, I robot. have 
feelings. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit like that. I have emotions. There's a really, there's a really funny, and it's really fun see it because this is this episode where like Pink starts to like uncover the truth about like Clara Oswald and stuff like Who that. Who are you? Yeah, and like starts to understand that she travels with a weird time traveler, and all those scenes as he starts to realize are done really well. The scene in the hallway where they try to teleport him away and then Danny Pink interrupts him and the doctor keeps on going, oh, for God's sake! <laughs> and then it, yeah. whilst he's really... Also, there's some really funny shit where there's a guy who looks like Matt Smith. Yeah. And he's yes, like, yeah, yeah. this is your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, whilst the doctor's like raving, he's Danny Pink's just like, I can't believe this. What the hell is happening? <laughs> and then like, there's like three different conversations happening. I just think it's good. It's really fun. It's, it's a really standard oh, and, episode. Yeah. yeah and, and then there's that. In o- this season. Yeah. And there's that other scene where he interacts with that little girl who like tries to come in. Yeah. She's character. really good. Yeah. She's really quite yeah. well performed as well. And her chemistry with Capaldi is really good. Yeah. So there's lots, there's lots about this that I really enjoy. And yeah. it's funny as well. It's one of the funnier episodes of Doctor Who where the comedy works. Do you works. think you can still enjoy this if you haven't seen the other episodes? Um, I well, you could you'd sort you of need the Danny the, Pink. Context. You would like you would care a bit more if you'd seen Listen. You'd care, well, yeah. yeah. You'd care more if you'd seen Listen. I think because you're the best thing. You, but to what do Moffat's is much. going for in terms of grounding Clara, not having her mm. travel with the Doctor full time, she's got a job. Yeah, I like that. Me a too. Lot. Yeah. I, I think that that's really fun. And giving a background and ha- and having the school as like this place. I like it. it, it what all does of those that alien want to nice. do again? What does he even want to do? Ah. Oh. Do you want to just eat people? No, he's kill. He kills people. He's like, I is think he, it. I think it's like a war machine that's like he. He's, he's like interpreted things and he's like doing a single man. Well, the war. war's over. The yeah. war's over and he's like a war so machine. That left relates over. to Danny. Oh yeah. A, oh yeah. Did you know Danny's a soldier? Yeah. Oh, that is that <laughs> yeah. is a bit of a drag. Yeah. The constant <laughs> establishing of like how much the doctor hates soldiers <laughs> and the fact that it's Clara, he would never. Uh, yeah, he would never. Uh, but also no second chances. There's no second chances either. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is why it's kind I of... I would a... never the first time, but there's no second chances. <laughs> 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 you fucked me off for the second time, I'm going to kill the you. The doctor just caught himself in this weird with paradox. An apple. <laughs> with an apple. With a spoon. <laughs> um, because... Um, yeah, because it's fun. It's it's nice that Danny Pink finally just goes like, "Fuck you! You're a dickhead. Yeah. Like you're you're a bit of a soldier, mate." Like that was refreshing because yeah. like, because it, it's really it's really like tedious when the Doctor and Clara are both doing it. And she's like, "Well, yeah, but you're a soldier," and it's like, "Come on, man!" Like, what, what, like I, you know, like I don't know anyone who's like that abrasive about soldiers. There's nothing ever. wrong with being a soldier. I respect our troops. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> kill the moon kill the moon everyone like thinks this is shit and it it's, is like it is quite shit it's like kind of shit it's still, the a spiders... better, it's still a better spider episode than spider-man 2 and uh, no <laughs> yeah. i mean the chibnall spot sorry Arachnids i get, them, the, I get yeah, those i get those confused it's easy they look similar and the sex pistols album yeah the biggest anarchy in the uk uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah got it yeah. sometimes i want to listen to Anarchy in the UK. And but I you just put on arachnids in the UK. And I'm watching it and I'm like, this isn't he can, he, he can go about like, he can get about half an hour in before he'll realise that it's not Sex Pistols as well. Oh, like, I listen to Sex Pistols a lot. Yeah, it sounds so. really weird. Like, I don't, don't know. Don't say that. The other day, just, don't, just, the other day, Sam just like sat in our house and like, we, everyone was out and I came home and every, all the lights were off and he was just sitting in the dark and I was like, what's the deal, Sam? And he was like, oh no, I just like, I wanted to like, I realized I didn't sit around with the lights off very often. Like no one just sits in darkness. So I just sat That's here. True. He said, I just sat here and waited for the sun to go down. And I've just been sitting here for the last three hours. And I was like, have you done anything? He's like, yeah, just been enjoying the quiet. Yeah, I was writing. You can't, it was dark. Yeah, in my head. I was it thinking. was really weird. It is weird though. So I get where you're coming from. It's you're, just weird. You're saying you're not weird. Is that what you're saying? I'm you're not saying you're so normal. I'm completely normal. Well, I don't think you are. Go on, give me an example of me not being more normal then. <laughs> you just suggested playing top trumps with train tickets. It's a freakish thing to do. And you, you gave Kill the Moon a 5 out of 10. We gave Kill the Moon a No, I gave it a 1 because I hate it. You did not give I it a 1. I despise it. You were the one who was defensive of it now. You're it's rewriting an egg. It's an egg. You're westernizing me, The man. moon is an egg. The moon's an egg. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> the spiders are cool. Spider- no, yeah, because the spiders are all right. And I like the scene where the doctor just fucks off. Like, I like the last scene, the ending scene. Oh, yeah, he just leaves them. To, to make the decision. Clara's all like, don't do that to me. Yeah. 
I, it's like, okay, listen, man. Like, I, I get that you wanted to leave them on their own, but, like, poor Clara, man. Don't just drop her off on the moon and then fuck off. But I liked it. He was, yeah, I didn't, I don't I like hate that. it. Yeah, and I like this. I don't this. think I'll ever watch it again, ever. You know, I think I would rather watch, listen. Yeah, but everyone would rather watch this in. But you could, I could, I when I watched it the second time, I sat through it and I was like, oh, it's a bit all right. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it was a bit of a cop out that the moon hatched out and then the, just another one replaced it. Was, it. <laughs> was born. The, but the scene where they first meet him and they're pointing guns at Capazzi, she's like, what are you doing? And he's walking around weirdly, he's like, I'm <laughs> testing the gravity. Yeah. And he's like, well, you could shoot me, but you see, I'm a time lord <laughs> and I've got no idea how many... Reach-. And he's like, got a yeah, yo-yo yeah, on yeah, as well. That's really funny. I like that's that. That's really good. Okay, yeah, that, that's probably why we gave it a five. <laughs> that alone. That alone. <laughs> that and no, him, that scene is sick. Yeah. But I like, mean, I just, it's hard to really like rate any... Capaldi episode like below a four like yeah. it's really hard because like if he's got one scene it's like really good yeah, yeah. and a lot of times Capaldi like, we've is massively given a moment. overrated a lot of these episodes just because we really yeah, like, we just think Capaldi is really pinpoint precise with what we want yeah, anyway exactly. so like so often there's so many moments that we can clearly identify going like we love that about yeah, yeah. the doctor we love that the doctor because this episode that. is not a good one it's uh, it's genuinely not like that bad I'm saying it's not good yeah, but it's a, it is a five. It's just yeah, like I know, but it's not a good one. But well, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as Robin Hood. It's not as bad as Robin Hood. Robin Hood. It's yeah. Robots of Sherwood. Yeah, that one's. It's, not, it's, it's I, not Let's Kill Hitler. It's Kill the Moon. Yeah, it's not Let's Kill Hitler. It's <laughs> so, yeah, fuck let's it just, up. Let's just move on. Yeah, Kill I the know. Moon, man. You can five skip out it. Five out ten. Yes. Oh. This season's well good. Yeah, this season eight season is, is really is good. Season eight is lit. really good. Season eight is like, it, 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 it's like, to me, there's certain it's episodes in brilliant. season eight which yeah. are like as good as like his last season as well. Like, I really like it. Mummy on All the of Orient Capaldi Express. is sick, basically. Mummy on I the Orient Express is really fun. I love it. This love is it. like, uh, this is playing around with Agatha Christie like tropes in a way that really works. Much uh, better than it, Unicorn and the Wasp deals. Yeah, much better. As opposed to going to meet Agatha Christie, they actually make a really interesting like, uh, mummy. like mummy on no, the Orient Express. really interesting. He's got loads of stories and he's, he's charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's actually the sickest <laughs> character. <laughs> and then he travels. Yeah. He travels with them. Yeah. I'd love it if the Doctor travelled with the mummy. <laughs> <laughs> at the end. No, he's got to travel with the nude. No, but in, oh, yeah. What about if he had a little romantic him. thing with the mummy? If oh, he starts getting so space hot. dated. That'd be so hot. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah. be fucking sexy. Yeah, because so, like, this episode is like, it's like Clara and... Peter could probably be like, this is our last adventure. That's right, she's leaving. She's ditching him. Yeah, which is yeah. already an interesting way to start the episode, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a fun way to set things up. Because of what happens on the moon. Because of what happened so on the moon. It's all linked. It's all linked. Yeah. It carries over. And yeah. not too much. It's still episodic enough. So you left me on the moon, you bastard. Yeah, she's I don't like... want to travel with you apart from one more time. Yeah, one then more. Then I'm going. One last time. And Peter Cabali's like, cool, I'm going to take you on a train. Yeah, he's like, the last hurrah, and it's just going to be fun. And, and then this mummy starts showing up, and everyone starts dying around there. Um, and the it's just sick, you, because... The people what, who are dying can only see the mummy. Yeah, the no only one people. else can see it. And then what happens is, like mid, it's like midway through, where they just realise that this Orient Express is not the Orient Express. It's a weird lab. Yeah. where they want him to figure yeah. out what the mummy is. And yeah. it's like, all, all the, the people there scientists. are qualified yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. And the way that the doctor has to investigate it is through people's deaths. I know, it's so good. So that's yeah. like such a fun thing to do because it's like the whole episode is the doctor doing like science work. You know, this doctor is the doctor who's like an academic. So many of his stories are saw... revolve around like academics as well as like action. I saw a comment, a comment on the nitpicks video and it was really dumb. I don't like it, but it's like, it was like, Classic Doctor Who used to be Sherlock Holmes in space, <laughs> but modern New Who is like, and it was like some bullshit. Like, I can't even remember. Like, well, like action. Mickey Mouse. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, this is Sherlock Holmes in space. Like, yeah, this that is, is what this. Well, this is yeah. like pure investigative yeah. work with like really weird, unique stakes because like 
you want people to die so that you can uncover more of this mystery, but you want the Doctor to uncover it as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's really great. Um, yeah. And then Clara's locked in a room with someone else. Yeah, and like, yeah, so all those little character bits where they're still on holiday, meeting people yeah, and talking to people is really nice. A cross between Midnight and Unicorn and the Wasp. Yeah, well, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. the Mummy. The movie <laughs> <laughs> with Nathan Fillon. With Nathan Is Fillon. Is Nathan Fillon in that? I don't know, but he looks really sad now. The guy from the Mummy. Does he? He's so. Have you not seen pictures of him? No. Because he went through a really messy divorce. Oh no. And uh, he always looks like he's got tears in his eyes. <laughs> I'm not even joking. He's really does, sad. Does he still wear the bandages? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually Dwayne help. the Rock Johnson he could help. playing the mummy in this, you know. Is it? It doesn't yeah. look like him. Yeah, no, it is. It's really good makeup. Wow. How did they get him? Um, is the, he a fan? Yeah, he's the guest actor on this. So was he able to use his like wrestling stuff? Uh, no, in the it's, a very, it's quite of the mummy. physical performance, but he doesn't use his wrestling stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah. Fun fact. Yeah, yeah, it is anyway, fun. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Playing the Rock Johnson. Tell, tell a friend that. But I was going to say, actually, oh, okay. uh, Sorry, I, I, do qu- I do quite like the, si- the side characters in this. The expert on the myth, is like the mythology of the mummy is really interesting because yeah. he's like a really fun, gleeful yeah, geek. Yeah. Uh, the captain's really fun. They're all um, really fun. And the uh, train guy who, who ends up doing like, does he do repair works on the TARDIS? The only thing that lets this down a little bit is that the ship starts to detonate and then like Clara passes out and then they just wake up on a beach and the doctor's like yeah I sorted it like everyone's fine I fixed it that's, what, that's how it actually ends <laughs> like he solves the mystery so there's that but you don't actually see him like get everyone out of the situation did we both have a problem with that um, or was it just you it was just me I was just like I don't mind that it's I like jokes I, I like the scene I like the scene itself the doctor's like drawing in the sand with yeah. a stick uh, but I, I, it, I was just a bit like oh, alright he probably oh, just got everyone in his TARDIS yeah, but I guess he didn't have what, to see it yeah but yeah, it's really good. It is a really good episode. It's really unique. Um, and Capaldi's so good in I it. I like the sound, the sound design as well, because every time you see the mummy, this like countdown starts, and it's like, yeah. And there's and some. It's worked really, really well directed. Yeah, it's really well directed. If you compare directed. something like this to uh, the uh, Chris Chibnall season, <laughs> just got, <laughs> <laughs> just got so much more like color and yeah, it does homage. Oh, and, so many, you know, so the, much more pastiche. The performances and like. All the little different camera choices they make when the mummy's chasing them. Just like, mm, beautiful. I, I love that so much of like... Should have given Ben Wheatley this one to do. That would have been interesting. Yeah. But it's well directed. I know. Whoever well. they did get to do it. And I love that like a lot of a lot of it as well has... A lot of this episode is the Doctor like manipulating the people so that they uh, they can... They will accept death. You know, he doesn't... He's always playing his cards quite close to his chest. Yeah, And yeah. sort of lying and manipulating for the better of the people, which is really interesting yeah, yeah. as well. And I really like the bit where the the mummy, um, like, like picks one of them up, like throws them, and picks up a chair. Well, that's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Like <laughs> yeah, no. And yeah. Like, ah. Well, yeah. Ah. I like it when the dog does a wrestling match with the mummy. Yeah, it's cool. That Peter Capaldi good. can wrestle. <laughs> he he busted out good some wrestler. good moves. Anyway. Moving, yeah, moving on. on. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Flat, Flat line. line. What the fuck? See, there's so much good banger, shit in banger, season banger, eight. Banger, banger. It's like Ooh. iconic episode after Why iconic is episode. Robots of Sherwood lets it down. Yeah, Robots of Sherwood is such a disappointment mm, compared know. to the rest but of it. But we're not talking about that no. anymore. We're talking about motherfucking Flatline. Now this which is like, everyone's going to be like, Ooh, oh, you gave it an eight. It should have been a nine. Really? Well, yeah, because everyone's like, Flatline's great. Flatline is great because it is great. Why isn't it a nine? I don't know, because Clara's really annoying in it. <laughs> like, shut up, Clara. Um, yeah. I hate it when the Clara's all like, I'm the doctor. I love being the doctor. I think it becomes. I'm basically am the doctor. I, but I, see, I, that's sort of part of our character arc, isn't it? I know, and it's a bad one. I quite like it. So I think the episode starts to be let down a little bit more once, if Martha once did the that. aliens start becoming 3D, three dimensional. Um, because the nature of the conflict becomes a little bit more like standard, clear, yeah. standard right? Yeah. Whereas like, up until that, there was so, so, such an aesthetic cool thing yeah. about like, you know, you, you had that woman completely get like uh, broken apart and then she just see her veins it's like very in liquid the wall metal on Terminator, painting. Like. Yeah, but more abstract <laughs> oh, and more yeah, strange. It's really good. Um, the doctor in the small tar, and I like the 
and I like that really quirk. You know, it's such an, it's an Earth episode, but it feels like such a sci-fi Doctor Who episode because it's like Clara walking around with a mini TARDIS in her handbag, <laughs> yeah, talking to the Doctor, doing investigative work. It's like such a weird setup. It's such like a such, it kind of reminds me of like Colin Baker with a with a shape shifting yeah. penguin as a companion who, type I don't type know, energy. I don't know who wrote this, but uh, I like that they deconstruct Doctor Who in it because the Doctor's all like you. You have to do this. You have to yeah, set yourself yeah. as a leader. Yeah, and it's all the things that like Chibnall really should have yeah, picked up about. on, because it like really deconstructs how the Doctor works a group environment. Yes, and that's really satisfying. The monsters, of course, are amazing. Yeah, Cara, I don't even Cara's mind when they go crazy because they look great as well. They look great. I'm but just saying just, the nature of the conflict. Yeah, changes you know, I like the guy. Who's what's the name of the guy that she? Yeah, meets? um, I believe it begins with an R. But the guy, the guy with the hat, the snapman yeah, guy, yeah, he's, he's really good. I really like really him. like. No, he's just a nice character. Everyone wanted him to be a companion, which I would have been so game. I would have been so game. Uh, but yeah. yeah, no, he's like sweet. You you like him, you support him, you want him to be all right. Um, there's some really great like tense moments in this. Clara is all, is okay as well. Like I like her getting all on her doctor wavelength and her managing because like um, it's like she's cheating on Pink with the doctor as well, but on adventuring. Yeah, yeah. He's like calling her up. Yeah, that's I mean, all right. Yeah. And you know because. To me, it starts like getting to a point with Clara where it's like it's like a weird addiction. She's like, She's Danny, like, I'm a Doctor Who companion. I have to cuck yeah. you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have sorry. To. The Doctor has to cuck you in some <laughs> way. And he's like, but I'm so well rounded <laughs> and like a well. But I'm such confident. a nice guy. Yeah, like, what the hell, man? I'm quite confident as well. <laughs> I'm gonna get hit by a car I'm soon. Clear, Come I'm on, man. I laid out this boundary for you as well. Like every other companion. Yeah, she was have. supposed to be coming back. She was, yeah. Um and. Um, yeah, the doctor in the tiny TARDIS is just jokes. Yeah, he is funny. Isn't it? Yeah, he is. He's just really I funny. I don't know. Yeah, Matt Smith would have also been really. They Matt Smith could have done carried this. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have seen Christopher Eccleston in a little t- mini TARDIS. Yeah, poking like, his eyes. Hey, oh! Yeah, it's funny that they made that work. That seems like it should be too dumb, but it definitely works. It definitely like, works really yeah. well. It's because it's well justified as and well. And they can only do it once, but they did it right. Yeah, so. they did do it right. Yeah. They did, and, and they made it work. I like TARDIS stuff when they do that. Yeah, man, and fucking Capaldi's TARDIS. We haven't talked about how properly how good it is, but it is so good. it's the perfect TARDIS with the blackboards and the books, and like not only that, but like Capaldi's season is the season where they use the TARDIS so much more as like a set, a living, breathing set. Uh, there's so many scenes that develop Capaldi's character that take place in the TARDIS. His conversation with Clara, which is like, "Am I a good man?" They're having that on the steps of the TARDIS. I think it's, it's a so way great. better idea to just evolve the current set rather than just completely redo a set. I think it depends what type of doctor you're doing. I know, doing. but this is the first time they do that. Yeah. That instead of building an entirely new set, they're like, oh, actually, this one's quite fun, but let's add some stuff. Let's change the lighting. Well, because imagine if Matt Smith's first TARDIS, they had just approached it in that way. Yeah. They had just slightly changed it. But then what would you add to Matt Smith's first TARDIS, which is already so busy? Lava. His second <laughs> Put a lava pit in there <laughs> and give him a dog. Yeah, K9. Stop. A raven. K- K- Go on, give him a raven. Matt Smith would not be the doctor to have a pet raven. Give him a crow. Give him a hamster. Give him K- a ha- Matt Smith would have a hamster. <laughs> yeah, Could you a imagine hamster. a little route, a mouse yeah. like running around? And yeah. ma- we should have a doctor with a pet. Why don't we have a doctor with a pet? I don't know. Peter Capaldi would have been sick with like a crow. Well, okay, yeah. quick file. Every doctor, what pet should they have? All right, first doctor, William Hartnell. He'd <laughs> no, no, sorry. No, all of them. Okay. No, all of them. <laughs> he'd have a he'd have a little shaved cat. One of those. Oh yeah, yeah really cat. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trouton. <laughs> well, Trout- you do Trouton. Uh, uh, Trouton. Uh, I give Trouton. He'd have like a pet turtle in his car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <he> yeah. Would. <laughs> That'd be so good. John Pertwee <laughs> would have a German Shepherd. Oh yeah, John Pertwee would German. have a German Shepherd. Yeah, he's he like running... Buster. Yeah, he'd have him in his car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he'd attack people yeah, for the he doctor. Would. He'd kill people. He'd rip out like. All right. Gar- yeah. Tom Baker. Tom Baker. You do Tom Baker. Uh, pfft, Tom Baker. <laughs> Part of me wants to give Tom Baker a parrot. Oh, oh yeah. I'm also like, it's a bit piratey. But... <laughs> Would you like a jelly baby? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, hello, this is my parrot. Scabbers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, just not. Or you could go really weird and give him like a hairless mole rat. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think the parrot, I think a parrot would work better with yeah. him. All right, Peter Davison. Peter Davison. My favourite doctor. <laughs> the best doctor. The, Peter. Sorry, everyone. Peter Davison. I'd give him a polar bear. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just because he's so like Peter Davidson would just have like huge. no Peter Davidson just have the most normal looking cat <laughs> and it'd be called Mittens. No, no, we've already done a cat. Yeah, but they, two dogs could have a cat. Nah, it's get, just right. a different if we're breed. If you're gonna do Peter Davidson with an earnest, honest to god, he'd probably have a rabbit. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. he would. He'd have a little rabbit and he'd be like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and he'd be like, "Oh Daisy, do you know silly what? Daisy." Do you know what I think. Oh, you are. Yeah, he'd like stroke it and walk around with it. Daisy. <laughs> he just ends up eating it. Yeah, and he eats it. <laughs> Should we get going? Uh, Colin Baker, I think, would have this. I think he'd the have. Penguin. Oh well, yeah, but if I was giving if I was giving him a fresh animal, but he does have a penguin. Yeah, he does get a pet penguin, shape shifting one. But I'd give him like a ba- a, a bear cub. <laughs> Like Colin Baker with a little like happy bear cub, happy bear cub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, hello, little you, one. You can't have a bear cub as your pet. Well, I mean, if you could have any pet. Yeah. Okay, I guess if I'm show running him, Colin Baker. I mean, he does have a penguin, but he can't have a penguin either. Then. Yeah, you could if it was a shape shifting one. If it was a shape shifting one. Yeah, it's hard to do it when we get to the J and T doctors. <laughs> oh, I did, yeah, because they just all have rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> all of them, little rabbits. No, come on, so Sylvester that. McCoy. He'd have an owl. Yeah, maybe. Sylvester yeah. McCoy would be good with an yeah. owl, wouldn't yeah. he? Okay, what about Christopher Eccleston? No, you don't miss up Paul McGann. He's my favorite. Oh yeah, Paul McGann. What would you give Paul McGann? Slug. <laughs> Pet snails, <laughs> screaming yeah, no, giant snails. Giant snails. <laughs> Why would he have giant? I don't know. He's crawling up him. <laughs> <laughs> he's covered in them. Yeah, he's covered in the <laughs> <laughs> He's got a mustache. Giant snails. <laughs> mm, go. Imagine Paul McGann like, having a really deep conversation. A giant snail is just he's like, slow. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't it's get slow, out of this like, soon you know I love you <laughs> and I don't know what to do I'm half human you see <laughs> I've got one heart now I'm half human now I'm different because I think Paul McGann would be the doctor would, to have the raven yeah he would right he yeah. has a pet raven yeah probably oh yeah yeah probably Christopher Eccleston probably like some scrappy little dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, what about like I could really imagine Eggleston would like Eggleston would never have a pet. He's yeah. too depressed. Yeah. <laughs> He's too like I'm a lo- a wolf. Oh yeah, that would be sick. Christopher Eggleston could He's have like a pet wolf. Meat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. I'd like. That. Whereas like, I think Tenant would, Tenen would have a golden retriever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you oh, good boy! Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Sprite then. Ah, 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 business, Alonzi. Ah. No, I mean... <laughs> business, Alonzi. <laughs> that weird, like, micro impression of ten in there. Really fun. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But Dave's just shit on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah, fuck it. That's enough, right? And then Smith would have a pet rat. Yeah, a but big fat a hamster. A fat ham- hamster? I think it'd be a rat always yeah, walking yeah. around and a doing little rat. Tricks. Yeah, I'd like a rat. What would uh, Capaldi have? Fish. Oh, yeah, he's loads of aquarium in his car. Jel- I think he'd have a giant jellyfish aquarium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my jellyfish! He's <laughs> so excited about this. <laughs> oh, 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 Clara, come look at my jellyfish. And Jody Whitaker would have a crab. <laughs> <laughs> she'd, have, she'd, have, she'd have living, she'd have a lobster that she like, took out of a restaurant <laughs> because she felt bad for it. Ah, oh, little guy. No, you can't eat this. She'd have all I of would them. never. And they're all walking around yeah. to a little boat. <laughs> Katie <Kate. laughs> it. And it's like, ooh. And there's loads of smoke. And it's like, welcome to my TARDIS. And they're like, <laughs> It's not even just about like six lobsters <laughs> all about the space. They barely move either. Oh, yeah. They're all a bit dry. <laughs> she has to like put water on I them. I think I'm going to bring my favourite little baby. <laughs> Their nippers are still yeah. tied because yeah. they were the tagger. <laughs> Do you like my lobster? <laughs> yeah anyway Flatline's very good yeah you should check it out Eight you should out of definitely 10. watch Flatline <laughs> it's really good <laughs> moving on oh. Oh. 
This one's a bit shit. So, like, you have a really good run. You know, Capaldi mm. really is really high level good consistently. And then it has these dips where it's like, oh. Oh. And they are it's tedious. It's like this feels well. very similar to Kill the Moon as well. It does. And it does. Uh, nor, nor does it feel that far off from Robots of Shearwood because, like, Kill the Moon. There's forests. Do you know what I mean? So, um, the only thing I, I like, I like Peter Capaldi with a child. Child. Yeah. He's with children a lot. I this, like it. This works. Clara Danny, and Danny are in it, and they're, they're, it's just okay. when I'm like, "All oh, right, I've seen a bit too much." I start Clara to cut. I start to get at mm. this point. And also, it's it, it keeps on playing with this like this. It, it, you it can't keeps travel with dra- him. dragging he it is out. He's bad man. So it's like this conflict has been here since the caretaker, yeah. and constantly established every episode since then, basically after he knows. Um, and this is like that some more. It's um, more of the caretaker. There's so, more, it looks it's like quite nice at the points. The caretaker killed the moon in, in the forest of the night, like a trilogy that no one wants to ask yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> the Wood and Clara <laughs> Pink trilogy. The Clara in a school trilogy. The Clara in a wow. school. Wow. Hang on. The, the Clara of Sherwood's not in a school. No, not that one. No, it's the caretaker. Oh. Kill the moon. Oh, right. Yeah, Clara is a teacher. and uh, Caretaker's good, but yeah, in yeah. the forest of the night... In the Forest of the Night is just like it's really bland, and this is they have a girl, the child actor in this is not as good. So what what happens? Wait, so so the woods. She the, wish the girl wishes, right? No, I thought it was like a science thing. Isn't it all to do with this one girl though? Isn't she like the main yeah, most important? Yeah, she's thing? like a conduit or something. Didn't she like wish it because her her sister went missing? Mm. I know that, and there was going to be something that happened. And the trees are actually protecting Earth, and it was a good thing. Yes, that oh yeah, that's right. The trees are protecting Earth from like a meteor strike, which no one knew about, which is gonna happen. Or it's something. just all really half baked. It's isn't really it? half. You don't even want to hear us talk about it, this. It episode. is half baked, man. Um, I can't remember anything about it. There's a bit where the Danny Pink like scares off a, a, a wolves, and then they're scared off by oh, a tiger. Aren't really CGI, terrorists? and they're really <laughs> bad looking. It <laughs> looks really, really awful. Lobby. There's some really bad bits of CG in this. The, like, the, what is this? The woods look kind of nice at points. Um, I quite like seeing London covered and, in trees. Yeah, but then the girl actor that they got as well, who's central to the story. Sorry. Fucking, you're I'm, really embarrassing there. <laughs> the girl actor is not that good either. Like, what, the com- kid? The kid with the trees. She's walking on. Oh, she's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, she's <laughs> awful. I, I, she, Sorry, I, I know you're like six, but yeah. how about... <laughs> You get a bit. How better. about you fuck off? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> no. How about you just... never appear in anything again? It, it's just on my a shame screen. because actually, there's some other ones in the class who are good, but they have so many of the kids yeah, now. The girl and in Kill the Moon is really good. Yeah, no, the girl in really Kill like the her. Moon is good. Like yeah. she works really well. I and there's a bunch of, any kids. of these kids' names, um, but, yeah. but there's that one girl who's like, Doctor, <laughs> where's Mary or whatever the girl's name? Do you remember her? That like, was really good. <laughs> I mean, it was a really good impression. Oh, thanks. It really reminded me of her. Did you? Yeah, the little mannerisms you were doing. You don't remember her, did you? I didn't before you did. did anyway, you four out of ten. Four out of ten. Don't watch it. Skip it. You can definitely skip this one. Dark Water, Death in Heaven. Five each. It's pretty... Uh, it's a shame. It, this is the thing. Is the I capacity. love Missy. Missy's superb. Missy's amazing. S- Missy's probably the reason why this is a five. Yeah, because everything else... Uh, Cybermen. Uh. Doctor being president of the world is uh. pretty good. <laughs> where the, the scene on the plane where it's crashing is... Oh, but they end up like skydiving and it's all a bit weird. It feels all a bit too action The scene on the plane with Missy is sick. I love that scene. Missy, before it starts to crash. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Missy's like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it. and Missy and the Doctor together. The first half of this, Dark Water, I prefer more to Death in Heaven. I think so. Because this is, that's the one where, because like that's got the scene with Clara the, yeah. doing the key stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Because it's like, so what happens is, Danny gets hit by a car at the start. Of the Which episode. is well done, actually. That, yeah, like that, that is really well done. And then done. Clara's got a, a big, old, big old plan. She's going to blackmail the Doctor to bring Danny back to life. By She's going to she's gonna put all the TARDIS keys in the Lava. Lord of the Rings fire pit. Because there's a planet like that that exists. And she's like, she's like taking all the cut TARDIS keys. But Peter Capaldi smells. He gets a whiff that something's going to happen. So he sets up... Uh, a great system 
in which he puts like a little thing that makes a Sleep? simulation. He puts like her in a simulation. <laughs> it's and then, weird, isn't and it? And then after throwing the keys off, he's like, and she's, and she's like, oh. And he's like, see, it was a simulation. I just wanted to see what you would do. I want to see but if you'd do it. We really like the idea. <laughs> of the doctor taking another one off. And then he's just like... <laughs> and they're inside McDonald's. <laughs> and he's like, Danny Pink's dead. <laughs> Eat your Big Mac. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah, he can't come back. There's no afterlife. <laughs> I got you a Big Tasty. Big Tasty Chicken. <laughs> that was all the simulation. Oh, yeah, it's sponsored by McDonald's. That's the idea. Is that this episode of the doctor is sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> got I got you a tasty. tasty Big Tasty Chicken <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> delicious. But what are we going to do about Danny? He's <laughs> dead. What about um, the Simon? They don't exist. I, it was a simulation. I also think this is one of the things that lets it down. Because like, I kind of like the afterlife thing and the afterlife concept that they do. But um, what is it? It's so it's the the fact it's that it is, it's it's a computer network, right? It's that computer network from Clara's first episode. It's like an expansion. It's not the of same that. one from Rivers, uh, where River goes. No, I it's the same so. concept. But it's a similar concept, right? Which is also Moffat. So where they upload anyone who dies, they upload their data. But the twist is at the end of this episode that anything that happens to your body, you feel it in this in the computer world, right? Mm. So. If you're about to get cremated, you're going to feel oh, your entire yeah. body burn. So I quite like that. So that's Don't kind of fun. cremate me. And the whole energy of that place is quite good. It um, sets are cool. Yeah, but the problem is, and, and just the way people talk, like, hello, welcome to. Yeah. Like, and the, I don't really, think you should do Missy and Cybermen. It feels a bit, it all feels a bit too together, doesn't it? It's like, come on, give, the cyber, give them a cyber leader. Give them a cyber put leader. Missy somewhere else. And also, put like, because the Cybermen Robert, are like a Robert's race. Robots of Sherwood. Maybe she's behind but that. But also, like, it's it's it feel it just feels it's a Doctor Who keeps always loves to do this thing where it kills characters, brings them back, and kills them again. Yeah, it really does like to do it because uh, Danny Pink then, because he shot a kid. Yes. So then he lets the kid live so that he can die. Yes. He like swaps the life back. Yeah. But like it's like because Danny Pink dies, he's in the afterlife. So now he's still like there as a character. And actually, the best, the coolest thing, the most interesting thing would have been like really exploring like Clara dealing with Danny Pink dying. But instead, she, the whole episode is built around her having the easiest time like accepting his death. Yeah. Um, and it takes away this fact that like you know the fact that it was just this random occurrence that the Doctor can't fix. That's so much more interesting than what they end up giving us. Yeah. Which is this like really turgid. Cyberman episode, which like has a pretty good introduction and the Missy reveal is really good, but then once it starts getting into the Cyberman stuff, it's very like bog standard, like Cybermen invading the Earth, but they're not doing anything. They end up just standing around. Yeah, what are they? What and do they want? Missy goes through all of this, kills loads of people. Isn't it just, just to, to fuck give, with the Doctor? No, it's just it? to give it to him, give him oh, the Cyberman right. army. That's what she does. Why did she think that he would want that? Because he, because he, with the Cyberman army, he can like solve so many problems. It's like the most powerful army in the in the galaxy. Is what it would be does he make them all explode i yeah he just goes like i don't want it and i think he gives them independence and they fly off and i think they go and like stop something out they go and explode something to stop stop the the thing closing up or something you know this, yeah they go to do something like that um and then so then other things that are kind of good is the danny pink scene where he's like in the cyber suit and he's crying um and then the doctor's there and he's all like he's a fucking bad man like look what he's done to me like the blame that he does there yeah. um and then here clara like pretending to be the doctor in front of danny pink and danny pink getting all like broken up about that so all these like dynamics are pretty interesting but it, it doesn't really go anywhere satisfying i quite like unit yeah like, unit's okay i really like the moffat verse unit yeah, it's way better than Russell T Davis's unit. Though I do like that he put Martha in it. That was cool. Yeah, to put Martha in unit, but then Chibnall sort of established Moffat's um, unit because I swear the first time we see them is in Power of Free, or is it in the other one? No, it's in Power of Free. I think when the unit when the they're unit first introduced because they're taken to the black the black. The Black Archive. Archives, yeah. The Black Archive. And then he take, gets... But I do like the ke- the Lethbridge Stewart's daughter. Yeah, she's Kate. really well cast. Like, she's I a like good actor. the girl with the glasses. What's her name? Odds? Uh, yeah, Odds? Odds? 
ostrich yeah ostrich. ostrich yeah like ostrich um but she's good uh the one who's a, like a doctor who fan yeah yeah because she speaks to me because i'm like that's me i think the biggest problem with this is like capaldi doesn't really have like that much yeah they didn't give him a monologue to, to do like yeah. he's he, he, he just kind of like skirts on by he gets given the army like obviously I mean, he says a, he doesn't want okay, it yeah but for a moffat like end of season it's all right it's not as it's bloated right. as it could be it's not it's definitely <laughs> not it's like concise it's not it's not matt smith's second season ending like yeah. there's nothing like that it, or, or matt smith's entire second season <laughs> yeah but it's 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 pretty bad it's well it's not it's just like average it's just a it's shame just because they've been building up and they've been it's all been linking. and there's been so many good and then shit the best thing well. they could do to danny is just turn him into a cyberman uh yeah and and, that's and, it. and it doesn't and it's like actually getting rid of danny and that like allowing that to develop clara could have been more interesting they should have made danny join and, torchwood and then and then they that's do another what should have happened he should have joined torchwood yeah that's right and then dated martha yeah <laughs> <laughs> Martha should have brought Martha back. They should have brought I'd Martha. Been so back. there for that. Um, and it's a shame because like um, Capaldi and Clara like separate ways after this, and that actually feels quite earned. Yeah, I like by the this. Ending. I and like I the first one out. Of, Clara one has out three of endings. Three fucking endings. I like this first one quite a lot. Yeah. yeah, and they give each other a hug, and the Doctor hugs her, and he's lied to her, and she's lied to him, and I quite like that yeah. as a way to like send them off. Um, so. And then uh, doesn't Danny Ping like send the boy to her through like heaven? No, he just sends the boy home. He just like gets the boy to live. Right. Which is nice. Anyway, should we move on? Yeah, five out. It's like a 10 out of 20. <laughs> oh, which master? <laughs> Bonus time! Bonus which time! Which master would you rather, rather have a drink if with? If you had to have a beer with a master. Uh, Yana. Yeah, I get. Well, what if he's evil, Yana, though? Well, they're all going to be evil. Apart from Yana. I do none of them because they're evil. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to have a drink with a master, do you know I would be drinking poison because master's evil. <laughs> and I do all of do them. Know, do you know what? No. I think I'd... I would, I, Missy, I would, she's cute. Do you know out of Hell all yeah. of them, objectively, I actually... This is a weird answer. Is it the but one from the movie? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it's the skull one. Oh yeah, because I I wonder if he can even drink. <laughs> so just, it's more curious. I'm more curious about that. <laughs> like if no, he didn't just drink. Oh, he does it. <laughs> he's, he's Revenge fine. of the Zygons. <laughs> you and I are just making it. No, up. I'm not. All oh, right. He he comes in and he drinks. Great. And it's really That's good. That's the bonus. So thing. now you know. So which one would you have a drink with? How knowing that. Probably the one from the movie. Yeah, he's lit. <laughs> he's so fucking good. He's my favourite master. <laughs> he's really good. Really he's underrated. Really no, really good. <laughs> he's really good. I don't like that you've put Missy really big in this. It's sort of like I didn't. I just found this picture. It's made me sort of want to go with Missy, but I feel like I'm being tricked into But she's that. just the most recent one. How, uh, how like What do you think of all the masters? Having them all there looking at them. Like, What uh, are your thoughts? My favourite master is either Missy or the first one because the first one's like really good with John Pertwee they're really like funny together yeah um and then all the other ones I don't like apart from sure. Yana and not even John Sim not I like even John Sim I, was gonna I say. like John Sim in his, his first, first episode yeah and in season 10 but yes. not even that much in season 10 no I yeah, I guess you're right. He, he only does a because Missy is always good. Like yeah. every time she's in an episode, like even if the episode's it's not, not that Sims good. It's not John Sims' fault though. No, it's like, not John Sims' fault. He just got like he's, a really awful two part. He just he just got end of time. He just got end of fucking time. All right, season so eight rating, rating. six point two out of ten. Is that really? That doesn't seem fair at all. No. No. Well, that's the. That's them all added up because you got Robot or Sherwood kill the moon. You've got like some low ranking episodes yeah. that really bring it back. Yeah, I like, guess so. Overall. I guess four out of four out of because 12. like the thing is, is like this doesn't mean this is like this is just the cumulative frequency of like all the episodes together, right? Like actually, this doesn't frame like this isn't our actual race. Like this isn't what we feel yeah, like yeah. what season eight is. We'd this rate is like season eight a ten out of ten. Like like we great. we like the like Capaldi's run is our favorite run, but like he you know no 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 season like <laughs> ever be beats Christopher Eccleston, Eccleston like because he's just the most consistently it's, good season. It, yeah, it's like in terms of show running like, but this has 
so many more like I would prefer to watch this over Eccleston's yeah. one just because like it there's so nicer. many lovely yeah it looks so good and there's so many great interesting moments in this these like, are just numbers they don't matter these are just numbers you're probably that- better off listening to what we're saying over what well, the numbers are but you know whatever we like because I find it so funny when people are like so disappointed with what you've rated these episodes <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah because we don't even know what we've rated them either no, we like yeah. forgot <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're, oh we yeah we rated them right after watching them yeah so i trust that we rated it right yeah yeah anyway yeah. we're gonna take a short and we are break. talking about this from memory yeah <laughs> so we're talking off memory yeah, we are talking from memory but yeah we're gonna take a short break short little comfort don't break don't go anywhere i uh, will be right back stay um, on your seat because we're gonna have nine some electric- and season nine Season nine is so interesting. I'm looking forward to talking about it. I'm looking forward it. to it as well. We're going to have some real electricity coming next. See you later, um, Peter. To I'm Michael to you. with the weather. Hi. Hi. Welcome to season nine. This is the season where Peter Capaldi is probably his coolest. <laughs> he's got he's sunglasses. Got a, they're sonic sunglasses, man. He's they're so, like, whoa. He's so rad in this one, man. He's got a, a electric guitar. He's so rad in this one. He's just the coolest man ever. Season 9 is such a weird series. <laughs> but it is, it's interesting. It's, it's alright. It has some of my like favourite moments and least favourite moments. He's got my most hated episode in it. <laughs> And Capaldi um, um, is interesting because, like, um, another thing that this Capaldi's run has is like he's a, he's different each season. Like the events from the past have informed how he is in the current season. So after last season, how it all went down, and after being on his own a bit, Capaldi's just like <laughs> to me. I always got the impression that he's having like a midlife crisis, but. Uh, and sometimes that works to the to the advantage of the episode and his character, and sometimes it works like the detriment. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the time as well. This is the season with like loads of two parters in it as well. This has got a ridiculous amount. It's like mostly two parters. Yeah. Like most of it is. It's like Moffat does one season which is like pretty standard. Yeah. Pretty classic. Tight. And then he's like, for my second season, I'm gonna do loads more coke. <laughs> <laughs> so much more. Should we go? Should we yeah, deep let's dive? Yeah, let's dive deep dive. Oh, Last Christmas. Oh, I like this one. Yes. Oh, I really did, wasn't keen on anything to do with this episode, and I didn't watch it when it was out on Christmas because I was so upset that it was becoming so camp and like over the top. I was like, Peter Capaldi's such a good actor. Why have they done this to him? <laughs> uh, why have they put Nick Frost as Santa Claus in it? But it's actually really good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it is actually quite dark at, in yeah, places. Yeah, the only thing well. that really angers me is the ending. Yeah, well, it's another fucking, we've killed Clara. So they bring no. Clara back in this one, even though they just ended it really well. But they yeah. bring her back in this. Um, and the ending, this was supposed to be Jenna Coleman's last episode. It was supposed She was supposed to be done. But then they did the read-through. And then like she was like, oh, can I stay? And Stephen Moffat was like, I... <laughs> he so was then like he that. just changed the ending. Imagine if they did that in a Hollywood film. Someone's just like, oh, can I just do a sequel? It would can work. I not die? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, I know. I'll change it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, they're like, fuck it. I'll yeah, change fine. It. You can be in it. Yeah, because it just kind of, because Clara's like all old at the end of this. And it's like, the doctor really well hasn't done. seen her for ages. It's really yeah. well done. It's like and a really good It's real off. sad. Yeah. And it's sad. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you. And she's like, she's like, it's okay. I had my own adventures. But yeah, that's right. She went yeah. traveling on her own and there was never was, another person was for it her. Mr. Clara. No. Yeah. And she's like, it's all a bit tragic. Yeah, it's but all, all a bit, bit tragic. She sort of understands. And that was supposed to be the end. And then, she like wakes up and she's like, oh, I'm young, thank God. Which really lets it down. Thank God I'm young. It could have been a really interesting uh, Christmas episode, but uh, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Because like, I really like that aspect of it. I like the face crawlers. I really like Capaldi interacting with Clara on Christmas. Yeah. Like the whole like... Uh, cracking know. a cracker together. Well, no, it's like the the opening, how it, how it opens and stuff. Oh, yeah. Clara... Um, it's, uh, it's quite nice it's quite fun mm. uh, yeah you know it's uh, it's got other people in it too from all over the world <laughs> all over the galaxy and they've all been hit by these sleeper slug mm. things uh, and yeah 7 out of 10 I think that's fair yeah 
It's decent. Because it is, it's never really bad at any point. No. And it all makes sense. Yeah. Which is more than what you can ask for for Stephen Moffat. Oh, God. Ah. Ah. It's a shame. The first two-parter, the sort of resolution of this Dalek let story. Me, let, me t- Go let, me, let me tell you what happened here. So I was like... All right, I gave, I gave him a go. I gave Capaldi a go last season. I watched most of it, and I was in uni, yeah. first year uni when this came out. Yeah. And I was like, "All right, let's give Peter Capaldi a go." I got all my housemates to sit and watch the premiere, yeah, of season nine, and that's Magician's Apprentice. Mm. And and uh, yeah, it's it was it was really embarrassing for me. <laughs> Because this episode is awful. It really the is. First Magician's one, Apprentice. The Witch is Familiar is fun. The Witch is yeah. Familiar is like, it has enough really fun moments in it and interesting ideas um, and fucking weird doofiness. The in opening it, bit with Missy is really good where Missy's hanging Clara upside down. Yeah. And it's like, the, the Witch is Familiar are like, I, I, th- I would. And if Death you Ross like, is having a fun Yeah, like, like yeah. the Magician's <laughs> Apprentice is really, really boring and shit and dumb and, and not that, good. Um, but The Witch is Familiar actually like brings it back a bit. The story itself isn't actually that interesting. The chair gag. But the chair gag is really funny. Um, all the really doofy shit with Davros is really funny. If you don't if you don't take this episode seriously at all and watch it as like a media of like for laughs, if you watch it for yeah. laughs, the second part of this actually can be quite a satisfying yeah, watch. Yeah, and it's aesthetically nice. As and well. it looks quite nice. But the Scaro looks quite good. But The Magician's Apprentice is yeah, really so Magi- hard. Magician's Apprentice, it has probably one of the sickest openings ever <laughs> it's like such a sick opening so it's like these hands growing underneath and it looks yeah. like world war one-esque and it's this little kid and peter capaldi's like i'm gonna save you don't worry what's your name he's like davros yeah. and he's like Ooh! and yeah. then it goes to the opening you're like cool this is gonna be amazing yeah this ep- so like if it starts bad at least you're like oh, all right i know <laughs> I'm but it opens with such a great scene yeah and then from that point onwards we then get like 10 minutes of this weird snake creature going around going where's the doctor yeah and people going don't know yeah <laughs> where is he and, and then he visit know. loads of different characters and then he's behind a rock He's like, oh, yeah, that's he's behind he's the rock the whole time. <laughs> he hides behind a rock. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, thanks, guys. Thanks for not turning me <laughs> Thanks in. for letting me hide yeah, behind your rock. rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts to Clara. It's the people that turned him into the war doctor as well. Yeah, it's like yeah, really it's random. those people. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Moffat says in his, in his book version that they just gave, like, Paul McGann uh, lemonade. Lemonade, yeah. I read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. So, so then Clara is there. The planes have stopped. And then unit are there instantly. Like they're like, unit, come over. We need to speak to you, yeah. Clara. Yeah. And it's Missy who stopped the planes. And then it's like, all she, it's like a red herring. All she wants is like their attention. Yeah. And then the M- Missy and Clara go to this battle arena. That's and in Peter Viking Capaldi's there with a time watch in a in a tank with a guitar with and a sunglasses. Guitar. And he's just goofing because he thinks he's going to die for some reason. Yeah. Because he's got. There's a thing. There's like it's a his, special it's his, thing. Uh, it's his will. Yeah, his will exists. And he's like, I'm dead, so I'm just going to have a big party. And then they get to Scaro. And, and then get, the episode ends. And it's really, much. like, really hard and <laughs> unfun and not funny um, and cheesy. We watched The Witches Familiar fairly recently. We just skipped Magician's Apprentice and it's yeah. fine. Yeah. The w- you don't w- even need it. You could skip Magician's Apprentice, just go into The Witches Familiar. Um, and you'd probably have a better time. Yeah. Because uh, The Witch is Familiar has a couple of things that are really like noteworthy. There's the really... I like the Dalek sewer creatures. The Dalek yeah. sewer creatures are fun and weird. Why um, does Moffat the... always want to turn Clara into a Dalek? Yeah, it's just like a motif with her, isn't it's it? Like... really a motif. It's more like, I need to get her in that Dalek suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when she was o- Oswald. <laughs> Remember that. Um and then the no, it's all part of my plan the flashback uh, <laughs> description of Missy where the doctor's figuring yeah. out things that's really cool yeah. and then the doctor and then because all of the second part 
most of it, the doctor and, is the doctor and Davros just having a chat for yeah, ages and for a ages. Long time. And the chat is like them just going around in circles. <laughs> but the way it escalates with Davros like opening his eyes oh. to stare at the sunrise is really funny. <laughs> and him and the doctor having a laugh together, like sharing a joke. And then it's all like been a lie. He's like, ah, I tricked you. <laughs> and you're like, what is this? This is like fucking classic. I think was trying to do killing jokes. I think God, uh, he was trying to do Killing Joke a bit, but it's so classic Huey um, that like I can't say I like dislike it. It's not good, but I can't say I dislike it's it. It's fairly, you know, fun. It's fairly yeah. fun. For the first I, I, episode, for the first, truly because cancer. I'm pretty sure we either gave Magicians and Apprentices a one, yeah, and then maybe the re- the other episode seven. a seven. No, we can't have done. Um, no, I six don't... and a two, or five and a three. A five and a three, it might yeah. have been. Yeah, I don't know, but um, yeah, I really hate Magicians and Apprentices because yeah. it made me lose. A lot of my friends in university, and then they all went, ha 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 ha, you are an idiot. You're a fucking mm-hmm. stupid brain, they said. To Nerd. Me. Nerd. Nerd. They did. I remember I was there. I was one of the roommates who abused him, actually. Yeah. Sorry about it that. It was great. Anyway, <laughs> was really moving fun. on. Another Under the two lake parter. before the floods. Yeah, the next two parts. Oh, I love the pitch you use. Yeah. It's like when it's, it's really it's, good. It's, yeah. it's when it's really good. Under the lake is like pretty good. Um, it's like, because it's like Capaldi's really fun in it. Um, there's an interesting mystery. Stuck and the on ba- a base. Stuck on a base episode. And you kind of feel like it's a standard stuck on a base episode. But actually like all the interactions, it does look like that. And to a degree it feels like that. But all the interactions are really good. The yeah. crew's nice. There's a deaf uh, crew member with yeah, the stand. Yeah, she's great. And she's really fun. And the guy's really fun. They all have little romances going on. And then Capaldi's really fun. He's and got then the they cue just cards. go back in time. Yeah, well, and that's fun. They've got the cue cards with Capaldi oh, telling yeah. him what's going yeah, on. Yeah, he's got like, uh, I understand. I'm sorry for the deaf of, <laughs> of your pet. Of your loved one <laughs> slash pet. <laughs> yeah that's great um, so there's all this and so Capaldi's really fun in it consistently his interactions are really good and then the second part because the TARDIS has been on this base and there's been this thing where they're like oh something's happened in the past and the moment you start thinking oh god like the Doctor never travels in time, back in time in an episode he goes we're going to travel back in time yeah. and the second part is set during Russia um, with and them they go figure- back in time and then they go back in time again yeah, and, and they, they go see back themselves and I love that shit yeah, and they see as themselves- if you would remember because I said that about Father's Day if you're keeping up. If you're keeping up. Uh, um, you, you, you're keeping count so of they, what I like in Doctor <laughs> Who episodes. So it's they, when they see the back of their own heads. I like that. And it's like really co- interesting as a concept to go to a place like the city that's submerged underwater and then to go back in time to when it wasn't submerged underwater to find Isn't out. Isn't there that creature from the God Complex? The one who l- always l- surrenders. Oh, yes. Yeah, He's yeah. Back. One of them. One yeah. of those creatures is back as well. Like and they're them. really fun aliens. Not quite an ood, but, you know. Not quite an ood, but, you know, not yeah. bad. Um, and <laughs> the, the big monster fucking... I like fucking... Russian as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What huge. did you say? What was your voice? You did? I am the sea. Oh, da- it is me, <laughs> king of the sea. <laughs> it was like Salamander. Oh, he was, was like it? the sea king or something. Oh, shit. whatever. Yeah. I, we had a go- yeah. jag- gag about it. The but he's like, proper I love it. That he's I like, like his huge. Voice, he's yeah. huge and, and he disturbing. Kills people. And he kills yeah. people. And the doctors are looking up at him. There's, and it looks really good once they're in Russia. That looks sick. But we haven't even mentioned, like, the second part opens oh, yeah. up <laughs> with the doctor breaking the fourth wall giving like a Ferris Bueller style mm-hmm. monologue to the camera and it's amazing and it's really because really good <laughs> most, most of the time like you would have probably if you had any sense you'd be like oh they're stuck on a base yeah I don't need this in my life yeah yeah you probably and even you saw the it. trailer and you were like oh this kind of looks a bit like the pirate episode yeah. a bit like this yeah. kind of looks like Doctor Who underwater yeah uh, you're like uh, ghosts are in it uh, skip but yeah, yeah, because how many Doctor Who episodes have water, yeah. like basically greenness and ghosts? It's yeah. like so reoccurring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, looks a, like, it almost looks a bit like Forty Two. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It yeah. really doesn't sell itself. No, no. But once you get there and you're watching it, it it's a really solid, like good. But the and second episode fun. opening the second is episode like one opening. of my favorite openings. Yeah. To any episode, it's really, really, it's really, really fun. fucking sick. And Capaldi's great in I both can't of these episodes. I haven't seen it before as well. I know. What? I know. It's so weird such a it was such a pleasure to watch it was mm. just like a really good solid two-parter and it's hard to make two-parters work i think yeah. but this has like that really good amount of it's escalation proper enjoyable yeah. yeah yeah it's a shame that it didn't that it's followed 
it, it follows like a really shit two part about it does Moffat. it does and and the fact that it doesn't look that interesting <laughs> oh well oh Moving well on. but really good really good and then the Another girl who two died and the one who lived <laughs> This is a weird one. This is a strange one. The because girl who died sucks. It sucks Apart hardcore. from one bit. There's <laughs> one. It sucks all the way through, <laughs> consistently. It looks dumb. It <laughs> is dumb. All the characters I are uninteresting. Maisie Williams Maisie as well. Williams is really unlikable in it. In both Game of, of the Thrones ep- over, she's done. She's cancelled. <laughs> okay, Maisie Hashtag Williams. Hashtag cancel canceled. Maisie Williams. But... Um, it ends with sorry, the, Maisie. the yeah. sorry Maisie yeah but like there's this end the first part of this is like really bland all the way through not interesting it's set in the past so that's hard work it opens in a fun way and then completely goes downhill from there because they're doing like a they're in the middle of a space thing and well, they crash yeah this is like a yeah this is like Moffat trying to do Captain Jack Harkness basically yeah. so Maisie Williams if you haven't been following Doctor Who or if you haven't even seen Doctor Who <laughs> some of you which i don't know what you're doing, <laughs> what you're doing. watching all of our <laughs> shit without having watched but doctor who Maisie williams in the girl who died is a viking mm. and she's like oh i'm a viking and then she dies and peter capaldi's like oh man i fucked it mm. i fucked up completely yeah and then no he it's not even no, that i know it's he, like, it it's like i can't like, bring her back but i'm not allowed to and he's just yeah. i'm so sick of doing this yeah. like i'm so sick of going through this all the time like i can i like can do anything i want like and it, it's like this it, it ends with just this really great monologue from capaldi which you could only get the pleasure of or even the depth of if you'd seen the whole episode yeah so you have to see the whole thing there's no skipping yeah um but then the woman who lived is a long time later and she's been alive which forever. is fun as a concept keep, as a way but of she's working. got a memory span of a human being yes so she just keeps forgetting and she just has to constantly reread what she's written yeah she writes understand. all her diaries and she's like, like forgotten her name she calls herself me now and the doctor's just come from like seeing her but yeah. she's not seen him for like hundreds or even thousands no thousands a billion, of years I, yeah. think. I think it's, a, it's like I think ages it's 500 billion years no no it's later on that that's that but this <laughs> yeah. is like ages and now she's like a weird rich thing thief person and i can't remember much of the second part just that it was like a fun idea and some of the stuff with her in that I is more interesting if they had cast um anyone else probably would have been a bit better probably would have been a bit better we've only given each one a five that feels fair yeah but we've given the i think woman we gave who the girl who died six. i think yeah i think yeah. we gave because the these are a two-parter a but they're not really a two-parter no because they're very separate they so, are uh, they are so yeah but they sort of are they are as yeah. well they're continuations but then and she's you in the raven you, one you, and it's like, uh. yeah you wouldn't have any idea like who she was if you hadn't seen the girl who died first and like if you just watched part of the girl who died and then went into the woman who lived you'd be like what the fuck why what is, is clara she st- doing is clara not in this no clara's not in this it's just the doctor and her from what is she me. doing then because she's in the viking one i think she's taking a break like the doctor just doesn't always travel with clara because she's still a teacher is she still in this season I think so. Because I thought after the death of Danny, she would. She quits. She, I think she just becomes like an alcoholic. She sits at home. She does start getting cream. obsessed with traveling. Yeah. Uh, that's the whole thing with this season. Oh well. Oh well. But yeah, this she is, as she was explained in a audio, big finish book. Is it? She's with the doctor's daughter. <laughs> On the moon. <laughs> On the moon. <laughs> They're dead. Um, the Zygon two-parter. invasion and the Zygon inversion. All right, listen, listen here. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Peter Capaldi has like a 10 minute monologue. <laughs> and it's really like, it's really good. Like yeah. Capaldi's like such a good actor. And he's just screaming about like peace. You know, he's just screaming Moffat's like like ham fisted like like it doesn't matter like I'm enjoying it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like Zygons a lot. Actually. Yeah, Zygons are really Zygons fun. Are lit. And, and it's like a really good. There's loads it's of a body really good sequel bit. to the, the 50th the anniversary. Yeah, it it's is like yeah, a it, good continuation. I love all the unit stuff. I love Evil Clara. Evil Clara is really good. <laughs> um, um, yeah, yeah, there's some really great sequences as well of just like Zygons being all around and yeah. like little Zygon like uh, rebel groups who are who don't like the status quo and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, because I'm comparing this to like the uh, Kablam episode because mm. like the resolution of this episode is like about like the people who are feeling oppressed get like some sort of control back. Yes. Even though they were like terrorists, yes, they are yeah, given yeah. like yeah. a little bit of like they are treated yes. properly yeah 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 and it's so different to compla- to kablam mm. not not a terrorist sympathizer at all no. come up throw away the key 
<laughs> shoot him in the head if you want to. But I mean, but then Nelson but Mandela my, was considered a terrorist. But in my fantasy escapist science fiction show, yeah, you know, you know, it's all about exploring the interesting gray areas. Yeah, and this does that really well. Yeah, and also the the threat isn't actually one of direct death. It's like they're just like go. They're going to like make it so all the Zygons reveal themselves, yeah. so that they can see how the human race will react to them. Yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Because I really, really cool. like that. Because they set up the fact that Zygons were were gonna live on Earth, <laughs> and then they just left it for a bit. Um, yeah, and then it comes come back, back, and yeah. it comes back in a really good two parter. It's solid. I like it, man. And uh, Clara's yeah, everyone's good. Unit's really good in this. This is a particularly good unit episode. Again, lots of fun unit stuff yeah. going on. I just we were watching it. We were we were proper liking it, but it did feel a bit slow at points. Yeah. The way I would say it is, this is like the Moffat era version of the Cyberman two parter. Yeah. Yeah. Where it doesn't quite feel like Doctor Who. No. And uh, Yeah, it feels more like a political thing. Well it feels very like seventies mm. who. If, yeah. yeah, it feels very like, you know, unit very like John Pertwee, like kind well, of Well Capaldi this Inferno. season of Capaldi is a big uh, yeah, it is a little yeah. bit like that. It's a bit it's a bit of an uh, it's a bit it's it does feel a bit separate from the rest of it. Um and it is but kind all of, of this season contained. Is like that. But this is more, uh, yeah, I guess. Whereas with right. the last season, there was like loads of episodes that all felt quite like similar. Mm. These are all like, whoa, where are <laughs> yeah, we going now? And every time, really weird shit yeah. out there, shit happens. And when it like, works, it wouldn't even be surprising if Maisie Williams turns up and stuff. I'm the leader of the Saigons. I know. But you'd be like, oh, cool. And, and when it works, it's really yeah. fun and interesting. Because like every episode feels like something huge happens. It's like a huge epic thing. Mm. So when they're making that work, it's really fun. And when they don't, and when it doesn't work, it's really like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. And you have to sit through quite a bit of tedium. This is the thing. People really don't like series nine. But there's a lot of good shit in it. There's yeah. a lot of really standout shit. But it gets off to a bad start. And if some, something's not working, you've got two episodes of that. That's yeah. the biggest issue. It's just issue. a lot of sixes and sevens. You know, yeah. There's nothing really particularly amazing with it. But this is like genuinely a two-parter that I feel is quite quite fun. Mm. I think it is a bit slow. Mm. And I would have been interested to see if it was maybe a bit faster paced because... You know, it does feel like it could have been one yeah, episode, it does, really. Yeah. Like, and some, and that's what's the that's that does come about as the case with a lot of it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Where, but I mean, for what it is, and that this what it is 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 like a very slow like Zygon political thing with Doc the Doctor. Yeah. And loads of shape. Sh- I just really like shapeshifters as yeah, well. Yeah, shapeshifters are fun. Narratively, shapeshifters always tell like cool stories. So yeah. I was just always down for it, and I think the resolution is so good. Mm. Like that, I, I don't mind. No, yeah, it's good. No. Yeah, it's definitely worth watching. Absolutely. Cool. Moving on. Moving on. What we got next? Sleep no, no more. more. Oh. You fell asleep during this. I did. Ironically. Ironically. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the one with the where they do it all from the camera perspectives. You know, it ain't bad. There's things that I did like from what I did. I was see. quite gripped. Um, because I like I like the f- it's really fun seeing the Doctor from that human perspective, the Doctor and Clara, and you get a s- you really get a sense of how weird they are and how always out of place they are, no matter yeah. where they are, which is fun and interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just th- I, it just looks so bland, really. <laughs> this is like it never doesn't even look this nice. It's not got these like reds and blues uh, and glitchiness. So like. they do this thing, and it's quite obvious to me anyway, because I've studied film. Mm. But basically, like. The point of like the point of view, the perspective camera stuff, like if you see it from a certain, they do this thing where someone gets inside this like sleep thing, and when they come out, then the camera is in their eyes where it wasn't before. Yeah, and uh, like I was like, oh okay, so the camera stuff is like linked, like is linked, and I just figured that out quite early on. So then it wasn't that stimulating in terms of the big twist, and there was this there's this guy. I think it's the guy from Inside Number Nine who keeps on going like, hello, is he's this on the on? ship. He's yeah. on the ship. He's like, no, yeah, but he's like, hello, this is what's yeah. happening. And yeah, yeah, he's yeah. vlogging and I'm like, fuck off. It's like the least filmic thing to yeah. just have a man talking at you. And I think, I think, I think as well, like the, the problem is, is like, this was all like a handheld thing. Yeah. And Doctor Who like has a really good cinematic like uh, identity in Moffat's era, and actually like once they because they're doing a different camera style like it's not there as much, and actually like the hand the handheld camera stuff isn't really that like after so, so the g- initial gimmick wears off, it actually just becomes a bit of like an uncomfortable viewing experience because they're not familiar with making con- like film like that. Or yeah, the, the I don't know. Like that. Yeah, it's it's. I'm glad it exists. Yeah, and that's why it's a six out of ten. 
because it definitely is nice that it exists. It's, um, if you haven't seen it, I would say check it out. I slept through it. I did. That's because I'm a bigger Doctor Who fan than you. I've read the comics. Yeah, you're probably right. I've got a screwdriver replica. Do you? Which one? Paul McGann's. Which one, though? Cause he's my the one he uses doctor. in the film or the one they designed specifically in for Night him? Night of the Doctor, the one, the Moffat one. The blue one? The one he's got in the short. Cool. I built it. Cool. Face the Raven! <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's things I like about it. I can't remember it. I can kind of they remember. They bring back the guy from Flat from, from Flatline. Um, they also have so the thing that I like is like the weird um, the weird refugee camp of Doctor Who aliens is like a really interesting addition to the human that. world. So there's like the whole thing is that they had to find a road that was off you oh, know, that you don't notice because the guy got messed up. The guy has a number on the he, back and of his And it's counting neck. down. Yes. And they have to track down like the source of it or something. Yes. And the idea is if you get that number, you die. And the, way, the place they find is like a secret um, alleyway, which is like a refugee camp for Doctor Who aliens who can't get off Earth. Um, and it's like down a road, which like has been specifically designed for, to not it's be Dygan noticed. Alley. Basically. Yeah, yeah. To not be noticed. And I like the design of that and I like how all that and looks. And Clara decides to, to take the number off him. Yes. And fuck everything up. Yes. And then she has to die. So, because you can pass the number on. Someone can take the number off you. Yeah. Um, and, and it's Peter like, Peter Capaldi had this great, like, he was, he was going to save the kid. It was all going to be fine. But Clara messed up big time. Yeah. And then me's in this again. Oh, great. My favorite. And she's not that good. The problem is, is like, Maisie Williams is like, because well, uh, this is also in the one that comes out, it has, has the second episode of her first two parter. But, like, once she is, like, an eternal being, she just performs it in a really, like, uninteresting way where she's just, well, like... like, Aya Stark after she's done the training. A little bit, like, <laughs> sort of just, like... I am me. Yeah, but she's like, I'm me. I don't remember myself. <laughs> and uh, she's like, hey, listen to me. And she doesn't sell listen it. Listen to me. I am me. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> it's me. I run... And she's so cocky. She's, like, got this really weird smirk on her face all the time. And it's just like, and she's always like, acts like Get she's on your knees and pray to me. She acts like I that. am me. She me acts, is me. She kind of acts like, like that, like a really like bitchy girl who doesn't actually have the social status to have that level of like dickheadedness that you get in high school. Mm. Mm. <laughs> or guy, it could be a guy. A lot who's of people like that. broken your heart in that school. That's no. Cool. Yeah, because Maisie Williams looks a lot like all your ex girlfriends. No. So they've all got that kind of demeanour. No. And they all go, I am me. <laughs> me. No, yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, and I, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It kind of it's like Clara's already well had as... two good endings. Yeah, and yeah. And then they're like, I don't care at this point. <laughs> at this point die. she dies. Yeah. And I'm like, at this point she gets killed and I'm like, Sh I don't even think she's dead. <laughs> I'm like, she's coming back. And guess what? She fucking does <laughs> as well, which is that I get this season. The Capaldi season is full of the death, bring you back, no death actually. But Clara goes through it three times, and you do it with Danny Pink as well. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, Moffat. Register your patterns. Just calm down. Yeah, because like. it's like at this point, Moffat is. It's weird that the raven just kills. It's, it's a like, raven that just kills you... people. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about, really? Uh. Well, Someone will like, probably explain it. You've got the idea that that like you've got this camp and this tattoo's counting down. And if you took out all the me stuff and you yeah. took out Clara was going to have to die, yeah. you haven't actually got an episode. <laughs> yeah. You've just got like the beginning of a good one, but like there's nothing really like... This is also the trap. It's like a trap for the doctor to send him into his prison. Yes, which is... Which is... Heaven, heaven sent. sent. 10, ten out, out of 10. ten. Best so... Fucking good. Unsub. So, unsub. unsub. If, you, if, you if you disagree, unsub. If you don't think this is ten, people say Heaven Sends not ten out of ten are idiots. Guys, They're buffoons. Look, look. We have consistently rated episodes highly because Peter Capaldi monologues in them. What did you? What did you <laughs> honestly think we would be giving him? Did you honestly think we'd be like? No, this, it just this, doesn't make any sense. This you know? takes out everything that we like. This takes out anything that could set it back. Someone, it's just Capaldi. Someone commented on the on our <laughs> nitpicks video, being like, "Oh well, 
the new Jodie Whittaker season wasn't that bad. It definitely wasn't as bad as that episode where Peter Capaldi just mumbled to himself. Unbelievable, <laughs> man. Because, like, ah, oh, so good. I'm up for watching this again. <laughs> yeah, today. yeah, me too. Because it's absolutely. It the looks fucking great. Inner monologue it sounds in, great. Because it's, it's like. It's written well. It's like Moffat brings in some of the stuff that he knows how to do with, like, Sherlock and does it to, with doc, the Doctor. Yeah. But Reed does it. It builds it as a new way of yeah. showing it as well. Because it's like, I understand why you might not like this episode, but, like, imagine if we had an episode like this with Tom Baker. Yeah. Like any episode. Imagine if you had an episode like this with Eccleston or Tennant. Yeah. Like you would, you would now look back at that and be like, oh, "I'm so glad it exists." Yeah. Because this episode is going to forever be really highly regarded. Yeah, it will. And it is. Twenty five years from now, people will be looking back at this one specifically because it's right. to pinpoint Capaldi yeah. as a doctor. Yeah, it, it's so true. It's so true. This is like one of his definitive episodes. If you it haven't his, like, seen it, week stop of season everything and it, go watch yeah, this one and come back. And yeah, no, to us really, talk because you it. don't want to have any of it ruined either. Yeah. Like it's it unfolds in a great way. Like you know the fact it's just and Capaldi is so is performing it it's so well. Dark. It's the Doctor in his like most dire moment moment yeah, ever it's, it's the doctor most hopeless shown to be the most hopeless and it's like hours of him being tortured and constantly trying to find you know how to fix this solution which seems to have no repair and with it's like surrounded by the reminder that he can't sort it <laughs> Um, with, with, and it's just great it's and, it's, really and he's just and Clara his companion who he's travelled with for the longest and clearly he's like very very like because Capaldi's got a weird like obsession thing with Clara mm, as well yeah. um, and this season particularly but it's paid off and it kind of all becomes worth it because of how it ties into how desperate he is here. Yeah. Um, and having him monologuing, trying to figure out his situation, monologuing to himself in the TARDIS is genius. It's great. I love it. The set is sick as well. The whole place looks amazing. It's really... Yeah, it's just <laughs> sick. Yeah, well, I think Moffat, what he's done really that Russell T. Davis didn't do is he's taken Doctor Who as a format and he's like okay we all know what it is as a format like and he's changed it as mm. a format like time and time again we've had him breaking the fourth wall mm. like listen is very different like yeah. to a standard doctor who flatline is very different like he's deconstructing who like constantly and, and because he's so aware yeah, that of the what audience are aware of that yeah. too we know what the standard s situation is with doctor who and this is an episode in terms of format and structure that's unlike any other one mm. and he's really really like changing what who mm. can be because you can't just if this was a different show to who mm. and this was his first episode you'd be like what the fuck is yeah, happening yeah, who is yeah. that but because you know all of who you yeah. know that he's a time traveler he's a time lord mm. and you know all these other shit that make it you know what the tardis is yeah. you know he's really smart you can just go into that with all that information and just watch like a really great standalone episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it does link to other things. Um, but man, it's just... Yeah, people are like, oh, I don't get the whole hybrid thing. Well, no, but the it's still really it's, good yeah, on its, it's own. Like, because like, the hybrid is just a concept that never like... It's a survival, it, it, like, it's a survival it, episode. It's of, a survival yeah. episode where the, where the Doctor is stuck in like the most difficult puzzle which he needs to resolve by dying over and over and again, again yeah for, and he's that he is there for billions of mm, years yeah. at his most dire at his most hopeless um fucking great yeah <laughs> like, it's fucking the great. action's really good like the dialogue's really good it's good episode yeah let's if, move on it, I like because it's off it, this is my favorite episode because it's my favorite doctor and it's, it is his best episode it's really good moffat just smashes it fucking kills Moffat it. Moffat shows time and time again that he's like still Cape, got it. He does, yeah. Because they, sometimes it does get a bit uh, 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 whatever, but then there, you'll get these moments yeah. like Heaven Send which just come through. It's a real treat that came out of nowhere. And it really yeah. reminds you why Doctor Who is the best, one of the best shows ever because it, it can it create can moments. This, it, yeah. can, it can do this. It will always be able to do this as well. It can always just do whatever it wants. <laughs> um, and actually, I think this becomes more rewarding because it, if you have held out and watched the season and you know what's happening as well, like you can watch it on its own and it works really well. But if you watch it with the context, it becomes even more like uh, the context makes it even more weighty and gives it more um, pathos and makes you connect with it even more strongly. And I, I want yeah. them to recreate Heaven Sent. 
but with Peter Davison back in his mm. in his cricket suit. Yeah. But it's all really well, shot. Do you know? I would. Uh, I see. I. I'm like never change Capaldi, but I. I'm a le- at least get Capaldi in the cricket suit. No, no, it's Peter Davidson. <laughs> I want to see Peter Davidson do it. He's not too old. <laughs> him and him and his rabbit. Him, him with his rabbit. Him with his oh, rabbit. Ah, yeah. oh, Peter Davidson. Like punching that wall. Like, Peter Davidson would be able to break the wall in one punch. And though. he's like, I've got a problem with a female doctor. Ugh. <laughs> There's not <laughs> enough male role models on TV. Ugh. I am the father-in-law of David, David Tennant. Tennant. That would be good. I love that. And I like the monster in this as well. I think it's quite disturbing yeah. and it works. Absolutely. Heaven sent, man. Just what are you doing if you haven't watched this? Call yourself a real doctor. And Hellbent. People people don't like um, Hellbent. Who? Just general Who fans are like, Ugh. oh, Hellbent. I like it a lot. I can't. I I like the whole to- Gallifrey stuff. So all the Gallifrey stuff to me feels pretty good. People are like, oh, I'm a bit disappointed about the Gallifrey stuff. I think it's fine. Gallifrey stuff is hard to write. It though. is hard. I mean, how good Modern can Gallifrey. it be, really? But I think this works. But yeah. we're actually, really, what I like is this, this because we Clara doesn't have a good story for ages in this season. But this is basically. a really good end. But for this Clara. is this. You know, now it finally finally happens. But. Actually, it does work, and I the really Doctor's desperate... spin-off show with her and me. Traveling the stars. Yeah, maybe they could get the Doctor's daughter as well. Yes, that's and what I like was thinking. Female doctors. Yeah, female. It's called female and doctor. Jody it's Whittaker. just female doctor. And Jodie Whittaker. Jody... No, no, no. She's the Doctor. It's it's a combination the... of Chibnall, Moffat, and Russell all working together. And it's called Female Doctors. <laughs> It's called Women Are the Best. It's called Women in Time. <laughs> it's what it's called. It's called Women in Time. <laughs> and, then, and every episode, um, they go to another planet and it's all women. <laughs> and, uh, and the villain, great. The villain's also a woman because you can have a good female villain. You can. Yeah. And it, it, I reckon it would be great. Maisie Williams is me. <laughs> Clara's Clara. Peter Davison's daughter as the doctor's daughter. And, and Jodie do- Whittaker. And we can have the doctor being reunited with her daughter. Do you know, I, if the new Chimna <laughs> season was that, I, I should be all right. I would be all right I'd with be that. like, that I'd sounds like, okay, fun. That's so extreme. That's so, so far yeah. out. That's You've so really extreme. gone there. Four women. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Fine. Yeah, yeah fine. let's do it. And they're all like assertive time <laughs> travelers who think they know best. Because Clara, by the end of this, is like, I'm the doctor, basically. Yeah, yeah. Me is like, oh, I'm eternal. Yeah. And then the doctor. I mean, I have no idea what the doctor's daughter's like. No, she's got in the in the big Finnish story. She's got loads of character. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jodie Whittaker. It'd be great. I Are there any Doctor Daughter fans out there? If so, what's a really good big Finnish story? Let us know. Because I want to listen to one. But things I like about this man, um, I really like once Clara once he I brings like plays Clara's theme. Clara's theme is really nice. Oh yeah, I do, I do want to say actually, even though it's not introduced well. The Doctor playing guitar. <laughs> I am there for. I am. I, I am. I, yeah. And I really like it because the Doctor's electric guitar a lot of the time is not in this picture, but he actually has a really weird one. Yeah. He's got a really weird uh, end to. Yeah. Uh, it's like um, it's cool, man. It's like oh yeah, the Doctor would buy a guitar yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Um, uh, I like the way this episode ends. Yes, I like him how it walking ends. into the TARDIS, putting his guitar down. Looks a bit sad. And then he just goes and catches yeah. his blue screwdriver. Yeah, his new He's like, Ooh. And it, but it's it's sweet because um, the the whole idea of actually making the doctor completely forget Clara it's is sad. really touching. Yeah, I sad. really like him just really storming older. Gallifrey shit. He's like, I'm yeah. bringing Clara then, back. Yeah, sniff this MDMA. Yeah, because that being the story is interesting because you send it back to Gallifrey just for him to like fucking manipulate mm. them to bring Clara they back. They make him president. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah. And like this is because this is the doctor. He's just been imprisoned by them. <laughs> he's so fucked off he doesn't give any fucks yeah. and he's gone a bit what he's yeah. he's really wired and then he brings it back and he's like yeah if we stay together we're gonna keep on breaking the universe yeah 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 because he breaks the universe <laughs> yeah. and she goes there's that really great scene where he's working on the escape and she just goes like how long like were you gone for like how long and he's, like, he's like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and then he like is like seven like billion years or I don't think he even tells her and she finds out and she's like completely like heart wrenchingly like broken about that and I think that really works it does get a little who bit who is the hybrid in the end it's I don't think the hybrid I think even it's ex- Dalek Sec right 
Right. Because he's the perfect hybrid. Yes. I, mean, I am a human. I am Imagine if they a did that. <laughs> <laughs> the hybrid. The Dalek set just Hello. comes he's out. He's just sitting there on the couch. Hello. <laughs> I'm the hybrid. And she's like, I'm me. <laughs> and he just eats her. Isn't the it wasn't the yeah it wasn't the hybrid the hybrid was the Doctor and Clara, oh the human and and the Time Lord oh. they would be the ones to break the universe. It was him and Clara that were the hybrid, oh. and that's why they had to separate from one another. Right. They couldn't be together because they were the hybrid. Let us know if that was wrong. If I was wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for all the times we've been wrong. We're just doing Which this from memory. <laughs> we don't. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Just ease I'm up. sorry for overrating we're, everything. We're, we're trying underrating our best. everything else that <laughs> you like. I'm sorry that we don't have the same ratings as you. Sorry we don't share the same opinion. Oh, Next really time sorry. we will, though. Yeah, but Hellbent, it's all right. Fun. It's good. I really like it. It's an 8 out of 10. I like Because him like, eating soup in Gallifrey and then continuously sending different people like, to talk to yeah, him. Yeah, I really like good. that bit at the end. I like all of it. Yeah, it's, it's all really all good. good. It's a really nice send off and it really follows on Heaven Send nicely as yeah. well. So it's, cool. it's sick. Yeah, it's sick. The Husbands, Husbands of, of River Song! <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Best, River song, best River episode. song episode yeah since her first one basically. oh yeah people don't like this one as well do they no no it gets a hard time this is sick stop <laughs> giving Moffat shit he's just he is what he is yeah if you it's take like, him appreciate him for what he is guys don't make don't hope that he's he not won't... gonna write those Doctor Who stories you want him to write he's, he's just, just the ones not... he wants to write and that's the husbands of River song and, and I say is... let him and, write that and I think you can this <laughs> is so fun to enjoy like this has so so many fun out there. It's this every is like, aspect of River Song that people want. Like, yeah, as well. she, she's it's done not really like, well. It's not like turgid and filled with like. Bleh. It's no. not filled with like like all this shit. Really to do with funny. Amy Pond and this stuff. It's just they're just like. You They're know, just hanging yeah, out. Yeah. And there's a whole, so much of the episode is River Song not recognizing the doctor because <laughs> he's regenerating. She hasn't seen this one, which is really like refreshing. And Capaldi is really good with Alex Kingston. So yes, they bit. perform so well together. The villain, the fucking mm. robot with the yeah. detachable head, is great. It's just Camp Who at its best. It's Camp Who at its best. It's the best Camp Who episode. It really works. Like, yeah. really comes it's together. It's just really fun. The do- the River's going around making out with other people, <laughs> and the doctor's getting really jealous about yeah, yeah. it. But she's not really realizing who he is and then once they do it's like it's a weird so... con as well and he's like yeah. she's like only dazing him for yeah. some reason and, and like Nardole's in it as well because like and, it is yeah. heavy handed it's like really like lays out it's all really the conflict camp, but that's but... nice it's like the bit where River Song just like gets up and talks about the fact that like people don't love her and stuff but like seeing how that affects the doctor and shit like yeah. that she's like the doctor doesn't love me and seeing I'm that I'm so glad this it's just really cathartic it's so because cathartic because River Song has not been treated well no she's, she, she, she was done bad in time of the doctor yeah. was that the one she was in time of the doctor Ta- uh, yeah the one yeah. the one before the 50th anniversary yes name of the doctor name of the doctor she was like done bad in that it was all like what she's dead but he sees her she all the time done, she was done bad in, uh, yeah, yeah she that's was, right and then she was done bad in the one where he's <sighs> got greasy of... hair and he's like marrying her yeah wedding of river song she's done bad and she's not really given a lot of focus in angels of manhattan that's more about amy and rory yeah. so she is in it and she's good but so she's, she's not... never but really, this is yeah. really her episode and actually it's really fun like yeah there's so many really wild sci-fi ideas that feel so nice here and feel really funny and playful and like self-aware and good and, and goofy yeah, in the yeah. right ways because it kind of knows that it's goofy and it plays into yeah, that because it's so light it hasn't got any of that Moffat melodrama it's a really classic it's, Doctor mm-hmm. Who feel good adventure I know right yeah yeah, yeah it's a proper adventure yeah, exactly. with the Doctor and River Song and it is just the Doctor and, and River really Song and it's a really fun world that they're in as well with and a really... the idea that we've got this head yeah like they've got this <laughs> But the robot yeah. keeps chasing yeah. them. They fucking wreck everything. The bar that they go to, it's kind of reminiscent of New New a, Earth. Yeah, because it's got like a gem in the head or yes. something. Yeah. yeah, and that's what they're trying to get. Yeah, yeah. the gen, gem in his brain. Yeah. Um, it's just, oh, yeah. And like Capaldi pretending not to be the doctor. Is really really good. fun, yeah. yeah. And then and then finally, like, you get this, like, really and lovely ending. And then the ending, ending gives it so much so, catharsis. So touching. Because you're like, so the sweet. River Song story starts really good with yeah. the silence of the library. And then it's like, I don't know how to do at her anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <And> then, <laughs> 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 River Song is the child of Amy Pond! I'm just, I'm just looking at 
River Song was like this fun like archaeologist. Like you really made a very melodramatic mm. in this episode. Get out! Get out! Get out! I'm writing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think Capaldi and River Song actually have more chemistry than Smith and with uh, yeah. Smith and the and. I think Smith was probably a bit awkward with her. It felt yeah, a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Whereas Capaldi and her feel really nice together. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, just watching the doctor like build a restaurant using his time machine oh, just yeah. for her. Yeah. And book a table and then just, you know, it's, uh, it really shows the joy of a time machine. Yeah. And, and then, then it's like, how long's a night on Caribbean? And he's like, Two years, isn't it? We're gonna four years. Twenty four years. Yeah. We're gonna fuck the night and, away, and that's what's really. And s- then they fuck for twenty four years. Thank God, as well. Finally, they fuck. Finally, but they also s- like. W- Sorry, what were you gonna say? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you always talk over me, anyway. That's if right. People in the comments have even figured that out. <laughs> They've so called me out. Like, they got it. Yeah. Go on then. All I'm saying is that <laughs> it really brings together like the whole season because this. And it really puts because it's a bit jottery this season. But then when this episode happened, I was like, "That's what Capaldi's arc is. It's like this doc, his doctor is learning to like settle down. He's learning that actually, like, twenty four years is nothing. Like, yeah, you know, he doesn't need to constantly be going from place to place. There can the an advent there can be adventure in like being with someone for a really long time and doing something for ages and committing to that. Um, and that's a really nice appropriate thing to put Capaldi through and for the Doctor to have an arc towards, I think. And works so nicely. And this is like such a good episode that does that really well. Does that arc almost single-handedly, really. Mm. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, but you interrupted me. <laughs> I was going to say all of that. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. Moving on. Oaks rating, 6.5. Starts pretty shit. Has becomes mediocre, then gets really good. Uh, it it kind of, it kind of, it kind of reminds me of Smith's last season, really, because he once you go from like, yeah. once you go from his. At this point, you're sort of sick of Clara, and it's like it is the end of yeah, Clara. And There's a whole episode where she's barely in it, and it's really good. It's one of the best Capaldi episodes, and then you've got Husbands of River Song, which is also really good. Yeah, and then you've got a really fun two-parter, which opens with a, a monologue. Uh, and then you've got a Zygon two parter. Another great which monologue. has a really great monologue in it. So, so I mean, if you don't like Capaldi, yeah, if you don't like Capaldi, you won't be able to enjoy it yeah. because we we are judging the quality of this off of how much we like Capaldi and how good we think he is. Yeah, and we so, really like watching him on our screens. He's just fucking great. So, and uh, this season, it, it's got the best episodes in it. Also, has really hard ones, but. It's. I'm so glad it exists. It's good. It's it. absolutely. Couldn't agree more, Max. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. <laughs> a quick comfort break. Our next sponsorship is um, Siggy Butts. Siggy Butts. They're good for you. And oh. welcome. Season ten. Love season ten. Season ten is what made us uh, get into Doctor Who again. Absolutely. We were like blah. Done with Doctor Who. We, we haven't seen, seen the Zygon we hadn't invasion. Seen we haven't seen sent. the Heaven Sent. We haven't we seen the wives of the husbands of River Song. I think all I watched was some of like the first all episode. All I saw was Kill the Moon 15 times. Yeah, I did see Kill the Moon weirdly a lot. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. So I, I, I think I like, saw up to like Robots of Sherwood and I then I saw like, the first two parts. Capaldi's two-parter. good, but the writing's not good. Yeah, it's like That's really what gone down. That was my little sound bite. Yeah. Um, but then. Max was like, season 10 is apparently good. And they've got and a new I companion. Went, it, went, was, <laughs> it was the fact <laughs> that they brought in a new companion that like yeah. got me like uh, interested. Because like, if, if there's someone other than Clara, it's a good, there's a good change up. And they've got Nardol as well. Everyone's <laughs> favourite. Nardol. <laughs> Who is a companion, you know. He's not brought into... Uh, Respectfully, he is. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, this season is, is really good. So we just, should we just start? Let's crack in. Go yeah. on, then. Bosh. Oh, oh, shit! shit. <laughs> oh, fuck! Moffat! Return of Doctor Mysterio. This was the last one we watched. This was the last episode we watched. We put This, this was one the off. last new one we watched. It's like a superhero yeah. story. Um, it's basically Superman 2. Yeah. For ages. What, Superman 2? Yeah, no, Superman, Superman 4. 3. It's Superman Quest 4. Quest for Peace. It's basically Superman 4 Quest for Peace. Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 they, ha- they actually just do that. Okay, they... yeah. So now we can be like... There was a Doctor Who episode that tried to do superhero stuff, 
and yeah. it didn't work. It did work. And we can move on. Yes. And we won't try that again. Yes. But at least we know. Yes. A Moffat, you know, he's an innovator. Yes. He's an experimenter. This could have been amazing. Yes. But it isn't. No. It's awful. Yes. It's not awful. Yeah, it's pretty shit. It's pretty rough. Yeah, it's got good scenes. The opening bit with, with Capaldi and the kid uh, is quite fun. Mm. Uh, and then it just goes downhill from there. Yeah. It's just all the bad, 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 bad American acting in this. But they're probably English actors who are doing American accents. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Whoever it is, they're bad. Whether they're but basically, c- Peter Capaldi accidentally gives someone superpowers. Um, and then he comes back and... By kissing like, them, right? Yeah, he makes out with a kid. Like a rose thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. No, kid thinks he's Father Christmas. He gives the kid a sweetie. He eats it. And then he has... Well, he's like a crystal. Kid, yeah, that he needs to use to do stuff. And then he eats it and it gives him superpowers. Instead of killing him. Instead of killing him. And uh, yeah, it's got nodules in it. Yeah, the only night, the only good thing about this is like the ending. The special effects. Is the ending where you get like a bit more context about him and River Song, like what happened after Husbands of River Song, basically. Maybe. Because nodules. That makes like, sense. Yeah, he's yeah, just it makes been sense. through a tough time. He's very sad. It's not good. Don't, Four out of ten. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Do something else. Go on. Uh, probably like go water skiing, maybe. Build a model. There's other things you can do yeah. with your time. But you know, Christmas specials always hit and miss. Hit and miss. Um, and then after that, the pilot. The pilot's good. Now, this is actually where it starts. This is when it actually starts. Capaldi's a teacher. A university which is lecturer. What you want him to be, really. That's, that's, this was the idea me and Sam had. We always said, before we watched this season of Doctor Who, we always said, oh, we'd love yeah. to do the Doctor as a university lecturer. Yeah. And that's what they did. And his companion's a student. And, and his companion's a did. student. And that's what they did. Moffat stole our idea. He's, got, he's bugged our room. Ripped us off, confirmed. Um... But the, oh, this yeah. is just great. I mean, the actual conflict that's in place isn't the most interesting thing, but that's not really the major focus. It's like setting up the Doctor it's in this new environment. Bill, and Bill yeah. as a companion. Bill's really good. Bill's the best companion. Bill's the confirmed. best companion She's confirmed. She's great. She's really great. She's, like, funny, playful. She's, like, smart, smart confident. She loves travelling. Yeah. Um, she's got a really unique relationship with the Doctor that isn't a sexual one. Yeah. Um, she does, She's not really that melodramatic no really. she's done she just gets Earth. upset when it's like properly right for her to yeah. get upset and bill yeah. goes through like a tough time as yeah. well the pilot has the these amazing sequences in it where the doctor is lecturing to like his class when we saw that we were like whoa yeah the moment we saw that Moffat's and then bringing in some big dick energy really to this episode. really great edits as well with these like visuals mm. cutting alongside like relevant visuals that are illustrating what capaldi's lecturing about as and you see him in this beautiful university he hall. finds out there's no pictures of her mum and goes yes. back in time and takes those pictures of her mum which is cute it's cute and um, then uh, all the interview stuff in his office with Bill is really yeah. good yeah that's a really good s- the dialogue's tight mm-hmm. tight dialogue we've got here um, yeah the villain's a bit like blah, but it, you know yeah she's okay she's alright you know it, it's like a ga- it's like gasoline isn't it or something like yeah, that yeah she's, she's gasoline <laughs> it's like yeah and she explodes at the end yeah that's she right. fills up the TARDIS tank and they go, whoa, we've got loads of petrol now. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's like water. Yeah, she's like water. She's like a water creature that's in love with Bill. And uh, she's like chasing Bill. Scaro. Oh, no, they have a little reference to, uh, what was it, Revelation of the Daleks? The one with Tom Baker. The one we saw. Oh. Uh, with the silver head. Little string hair. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It's it's the Tom Baker, it's the Daleks versus the cyborgs. Uh, yeah, and they they have them in the background, the yeah. weird cyborg people, which yeah, is yeah. the Tom Baker one way traveling of with the Daleks. Yeah, yeah, they're always of the Daleks. So resurrection, resurrection, revelation, revelation's the latest so, one. Someone I think. will come in this. Yeah, yeah no, but you know the one we're talking yeah. about, and they show up, and it's like, oh, that's cute, and they're traveling about the place. Um, I just love the idea of the doctor interviewing someone to be his companion yeah, as well. It's That's fun. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Nardo is like Matt Lucas is a really good like Doctor Who companion, and the idea is really weird. And for the fir- this is like the first time the Doctor's like traveled with some with a companion that's like not human. Yeah, yeah. And his dynamic with Nardo like is Nardo's like his like this bossy mum that goes around with the Doctor, <laughs> and like Nardo doesn't rate the Doctor like at all. <laughs> and Bill doesn't even like like she doesn't really <laughs> worship the Doctor as a person either. No, they're both no. just like they're both like good mates with him, and like he's good. And the thing is, I think the Doctor to airs enough he makes enough errors in this season mm. to kind of that the fact that it really he feels more humanized in this 
Um, which I like a lot, you know. Yeah, because the way that Bill's written is like, she's sort of a bit ditzy, but then she's also really smart because she immediately sees the title. So she's like, how the hell did that get in here? Mm. How did that work? How did you do that? So she's just got this natural... And then he's like, oh, I brought it in with like, a I brought crane. It in with, a, with a crane. She's like, yeah, but... And then isn't it like, oh... The carpet's underneath it. Yeah, yeah, didn't you get the carpet later? Like, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, I mean, I always... I think this is a really good starting point for Doctor Who. Mm. I think it's a really good way to get people into Who. Yeah, it is. Um, a lot of people would prefer other stuff. but As I good as Rose. As good as Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. Smile. Smile. This is an interesting episode. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I like... It's creepy. I love the design of this. It looks the really nano cool. The nanobots. The nanobots with the phone. Yeah. If you're not happy, they'll kill you. And those little emojis I'm, on the back of their neck. I really, like, changes. I really like the scene when they get served food and it's just like oh, blue it's jelly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, yeah. It's really surreal, uh, yeah. science fiction, futuristic stuff. Uh, it's really different because because it is just mostly like these robots and mm. like the people there and Capaldi's figuring out the mystery behind mm. it. It's just like a really standard future episode of who mm. it's got social commentary in it. It's got like consistent themes. It's got like pretty good character writing. Mm. Uh, it's, it's creepy in places. Yeah. It's funny in places. Yeah. It does. It, it does everything a doctor who episode should do, but there's no part of it, which is particularly stand out, but it is very tight. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And it looks really nice as well. The TARDIS and the wheat fields looks yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, and the building way all more the interesting than what they're was. doing in season uh, season 13? Yeah. What's that? No, for season 12. Season 11? Whittaker's season. Season 11, yeah. Way more interesting than what they're doing with Whittaker's season in terms of visuals. Yeah. Um, and, and sci-fi concepts as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Because like, it, it's the human race as well, which is like, it's, the, it's like a colony. It's a human colony that they're making in preparation. Um, and it's just got this really interesting, fun, sinister twist to it. Um yeah, it's just good. It's just like yeah, a good episode. No, there's nothing really to say. Yeah. It, it just does everything really well. Um, and Bill's so excited by it all yeah, as well. Yeah. It's and so you're fun. still getting to know Bill. Yeah. And it flows really nicely from the pilot episode. Yes. And now we've got the worst one in a season. Uh, Welcome to Thin Ice. It's got um a big fish in it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right um it's not good so the only thing i really remember properly is that there's an actor from benny dorm in it <laughs> well i always from benny dorm because when i was editing the 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 who video on nitpicks i wanted to put the clip where they talk about like racism in the time period because mm. and then i saw how they did it with martha's first historical episode and it's like almost like the same yeah. line for line. It's pretty you much start talking about the butterfly effect and like, well, don't step on a butterfly. Like all this other stuff. And it's like the exact same dynamic. Yeah. So whoever wrote Thin Ice is probably rewatched that episode as well. <laughs> as like a, you know, how do I do this? Yeah. And then just redid it. Yeah. And no one noticed because Shakespeare code is boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's all a bit too overplayed in a way that doesn't feel like it works. It's like a past episode and past episodes are oftentimes a bit harder I'm to get I'm not sure on if with. I've ever finished this episode, you know? I have. It, so it's, it, it's just a bit hammy. The villain a bit hammy apparently there is something about racism oh. at the end i can't remember yeah that's what someone said in the comments does anyone rate this episode are we missing out if you like thin ice tell us why but we do not we do not and we can't remember it sorry sorry episode five knock knock, knock. knock. this Love is so this one. good yeah this is so good Cut, uh, bill like moves into a new house with with a bunch of students from uni um and they it's all like a, die. They all di yeah, they do, don't they? They all die. And then the doctor shows up and li like just starts like living, like really interferes with like Bill's life. And she's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And then he just starts uncovering this like weird mystery in this house. And it's like a really weird like. <laughs> 
house like haunted house story I but know. it's not haunted I and know. it's like it's just got living wood that yeah. like consumes people that's being controlled by these like alien the bugs the antagonist is so good in this yeah because he's really hammy. david lynch yeah right, he's like it? hammy in this really weird yeah. way and he does seem disturbing and, and capaldi's it's... working so well with the whole like youth thing and they all love him they're, yeah. like, oh, they're oh, all really sick. admiring yeah. of capaldi and capaldi like so unfazed or even <laughs> unbothered um <laughs> and just constantly like it's, it's funny kind of like it's like really a combination funny. of fresh meat and inside number nine yeah <laughs> it does feel like that with yeah. capaldi and the doctor oh, i got a text someone sent me an image how fun oh wow um yeah it's good and the twist is actually half decent as well like i don't know the reveal is kind of disturbing it feels a bit dumb um which is probably why it's not higher like it's not like a nine but it's like so good consistently all through and so fun um, as well it's like really enjoyable all the housemates are like really interesting caricatures of like uni Those students standard units and then they all die and then they all die yeah, yeah like the Asian girl's like really excited by him and then there's like a yeah. guy flirting with Bill and Bill's like nah I'm lesbian and you're like cool yeah. cool 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 it's it's fun yeah it's, man it's, it's, it's genuinely like what you want in a Who episode no doubt with Bill and Capaldi um, yeah I, I don't know like Check it out. Check out the whole of season ten. Really, season ten is all. Because season ten, ten has con- is consistent as heck. Like, yeah, it's it just really, really good end for Moffat. I would say. Mm. Um, and knock knock is just one of those episodes which is just it's really good for those. In different it's got reasons. great ambience and tone as well. Like it just really has like its tone down yeah, really yeah. well. It's as like creepy. a pseudo creepy horror yeah. sort of feeling. Yeah, and the yeah. house, the whole house set is really it well looks done. Great. Yeah, the, <laughs> really the whole good. opening montage when they're looking at all the different like properties as well is really fun yeah yeah it is really some fun really good visual grammar some good uh visual gags some good london grammar yeah so they're good in it as well they yeah. are, i forgot london grammar in it they're four times only they have four <laughs> scenes where they sing a song they sing in all four scenes yeah and is it truck or is it the just their music no it's covers covers of what, what one covers? of them's red hot chili peppers yeah and then they cover um, and then they cover a Goldie song, mm-hmm. and then they cover uh, a, a, a Smash Mouth, actually. Which song? What Smash Mouth song? Um, so, uh, the, they actually cover the Smash Mouth cover of Love Was Only True in well, Fairy Tale. that's the cover of... Well, they do it in the style of Smash Mouth. Oh, so she's going... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't got... really remember that. Are you sure that's in Knock Knock? Oh. Uh. I might have Are just you sure m- London Grammar in this? I might have just made it up. Well, let us know in the comments if you remember <laughs> London Grammar. Oxygen. Oxygen! This is another one of those episodes. Capaldi has a lot of these where they look like really standard episodes. But they're, they're really basic. Not. And then they're yeah. not. Uh, because this looks like a standard stuck on a base in space episode for the Doctor. But they up the stakes. Uh, it also Ooh. has zombies. So you're like, oh, zombies as well. Capaldi on a space base stuck on it with dead people. It's just that other one, yeah. forty two. Yeah, it's, it's another like forty two episode, an- or it's another. Uh, it's another it's Planet like, of the Dead. Yeah, or the ones where they have duplicates of themselves is kind of similar as well. Yeah, but yeah. but it brings out some. It has some really fun like capitalist like ideas. Capaldi gets basically. blind in this, and quite Capaldi, early on. Yeah. yeah, and Bill becomes a zombie at one yeah, point. Yeah, and as Bill well. it is like Bill's dead. Yeah, and then the ship. The suits you have to pay for, pay as you go. Like yeah, to shit. have so they give you Ooh, oxygen. It's you all have to pay for the oxygen. capitalism. It's capitalism, but so it's yeah, actually again, concise and consistent it's good. themes. Yeah, um, sh- uh, concise, well-written scenes. Uh, genuinely scary in places. Yeah, uh, just similar to just uh, similar to Smile. Yeah, it's just like an episode then, that's all tight. But then like, this comes and surprises you by having like because it feels like just another episode and then it has these like really deep consequences that carry over yeah because making the doctor blind like you like what when you watch it I, when i watched it i didn't think that would you know i thought everything would be sorted by the end of it basically didn't think that would stay on and it yeah. fucking you know sticks you're like shit and it makes things feel so much heavier and it makes these adventures feel so much more risky because now it's like 
the consequences of an adventure isn't just like someone could die. It's actually like there can be long standing, there can be other effects that are long lasting. Yeah, we, can, we can disable you. Yeah, you know, we can make you blind. Let's get rid that, of one of Bill's arms. And that compl- oh. and it completely, and they completely have to reframe then how like the doctor approaches conflict and adventure as well from moving forward. So it's a really good uh, device for, for bringing a new element to the format of it as yeah. well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because now he has another uh, hurdle that he has to overcome every time he needs to engage with some sort of conflict and that's really cool um yeah and there's loads of fun alien designs there's a blue guy in that and yeah, like, yeah. um that's really good yeah. i just couldn't be bored watching this episode no. i'm not bored watching no it. you're never bored no. this uh, this season does go back it has less of those like big capaldi moments mm. i find but it's yeah. so much more consistent with its stories yeah and actually it's the stories that really make this season work is like every time these stories actually always give you something narratively to like enjoy and engage with to make them feel really like satisfying. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, moving on. Yeah, next one. And the and the spacesuits look good. Do they? Yeah, look at them. They look terrible. What are you talking about? Oh, all right then. No, I actually like them. <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, I know. Extremists. Nine out of ten. What? Bish, bash, bosh. What? Oh, it's a simulacrum. Ah. Ah! This one's tight. Capaldi's really cool in this. <laughs> I don't like, know. If you don't like this episode, you're in a simulation. <laughs> Plot twist. Plot twist. Um, yeah, this is like before it's the. Ch- it's so whack. It's, it's so, so much so fun whack. though, because like, it just it's just constantly this. Uh, it feels like it should be a two parter, but it yeah. isn't. It's yeah. just like really weird. Yeah. It just starts off with like the Pope, the coming. Pope appearing, and he's like, <laughs> the last episode it ends with, uh, okay, goodbye, goodbye, Bill, bye. And now I was like, you're right, Doctor. <laughs> and he's like, I'm still blind. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the way I'm still blind. Yeah, like, he, he, in fact, I'm pretty sure he just goes like, no, no, no. Everything's not right. <laughs> I'm, I'm still blind, blind. <laughs> um, and this, and it's and so then funny because is Capal- continuing, from, continuing that, yeah. from his blindness, yeah. and he goes around like feeling everything. Yeah, yeah. The doctor, but he's so still pretending that he can. He see. doesn't want Bill to know that he's blind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but um, and the the plot to this is really interesting. Yeah. Where like, there's a piece of writing that if you, you read, read it, it, you kill yourself. You kill yourself, and that's so interesting. And it's a I, Doctor it, Who fan fiction in the end. And that's because the twist, because it? the twist is that. It's a simulation, and yeah. that's why people kill themselves. Is because they understand it's because a simulation. Because they realize if you say any number of sequence, it was always the same yeah. thing. Like, let's try it right now. One. Um, <laughs> no. Okay. One, two, three. Forty-two. Four, two, three. Oh, close. <laughs> One, two, three. Seventy-eight. Oh. One, two, three. Thirty-two. <laughs> we're not in a simulation. Fuck, we're we're fine. good. Um, um, you just we ch- we check sometimes. Yeah, so every now basically, and again. it's like if you say any order of sequence, it's always the same thing, and it's ripped off that. C- c- it's ripped off that Tom Baker episode, isn't it? What the one where they do the yeah. do, 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 do. do. So you uh, because that, you're but a that's robot. a different thing. It's because they they because try to robots, figure out everything they can't logically do random. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Whereas yeah, this is I know, but, it's, but you is, can tell it's, it's got his influences. Um, He's got his influences from that. that really He's like, I need some ideas for season ten. Oh, I'll binge yeah. Tom Baker. A bit. There's that really great uh, sequence where they go to the science lab and there's all the German <laughs> and scientists they're just killing themselves. and they're all getting Keep trashed, yeah. getting ready to all die. Mm, yeah. And you're like, fuck, that's great. That's yeah, so dark as that. well. I really um, like the tunnel, though, that can enter different like worlds. And then Capaldi realizes, yes, I'm a simulation, but I can still contact the real me. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's I'm how it ends to... with the Doctor losing, but sort yeah. of winning. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, he wins in reality, yeah, right? Yeah. And then that, yeah, it's, and it, and it, and it, and it, it kind of like justifies weird shit like the Pope sharing up and stuff like that. It's got an aesthetic. This yeah. Episode. The only thing is, I don't really like what the monks look like. I do. You like the designs? I like them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them because it's like. I mean, the fact that they are monks anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's weird. like, the fact that they are that is like, it doesn't really give you a whole lot to work with. I guess it could make them look, like, kind of slick and then make their costumes. Yeah, because I would have liked it if the monks looked really nice based yeah. around what they do Hello. and how they invade people. I'm that would have been, like, more monk. interesting. 
But I am um, a monk. Hello. This was this was the episode that really won us over to Absolutely. like Doctor Who again. Like this really like this is this was an important episode Remember, for us. We hadn't seen Heaven Sent. We hadn't seen Heaven <laughs> yeah. Sent. We hadn't we we barely seen any Smith. I think like at this point, or we weren't enthusiastic about it at least. No, I wasn't. You know, if it wasn't for extremists, we wouldn't be making any Doctor Who videos. I so don't you've think, got yeah. extremists to thank. For and this it two is hour great review. Yeah, that's right. Oh wow. Okay. Pyramid at the end of the world and the lie of the land. The f- sort of continuation coming back. of extremists. The master's back in this no, one. No, he's not. Yeah, she is. He goes and speaks to her. Oh, yeah. But and she's sort of in it through the whole... Oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, It yeah. shows her origin why she of why she's in, in the those bolts. Um, and that stuff's cool. Look at the set. Yeah. You know how to charm me on this episode. You put the best bloody screenshot yeah. of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it that looks great. so, like... Um, 1984 meets um, Space Oddity. Like, it's really <laughs> yeah. sick. Yeah, um, and Capaldi looks so gothic and I great. I love the in scene. It. He gets a monologue. He gets oh, a monologue, and that right, is good. Then. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely and a, and a monologue where, than six. A monologue where he's pretending to be <laughs> evil. Yeah. <laughs> I, the humans chose this. Yeah. Bill. What do you want me to do yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it? So good. Human ca- uh, evil Capaldi. I want more of him. Mm. I like him a lot. He's putting out propaganda about how you have to trust it because it, the last extremist so the, that's the second part the first part is a little bit less like it's okay because it's like the pyramid shows up and I it's like the pyramid all of him being the president stuff and he's in the yes, plane yes that's always it? fun and that he's not in the plane in this though he's in like a base space oh he's in the plane for a bit isn't he's he? in the plane for a bit yeah yeah and Bill's all like oh my god like is this what you get he's like this is my job <laughs> <laughs> and that's great yeah um, and uh, you know it, it's actually, like I do like and there's a girl and she's like and it opens with him voiceover being like all these little things are coming closer yeah yeah, yeah so the because the, the monks choose to go on the day that the earth's gonna get fucked anyway yeah yeah so they're yeah. like the earth's gonna be fucked anyway we'll like, save you yeah, from it yeah. and so that and that's interesting the, the the monks as sort of an antagonist or being the way that they are is very interesting and i think that's it's like it's set up in a really interesting way with p- the pyramid at the end of the world and you're like oh and then when bill gives them the permission to take over the world you're like that's a really interesting setup the lie of the land it, it does go very 1984 it the just becomes the like is that my, is my is the best of one out of this too part of for sure <laughs> i really like it it's see like, I, I don't know it's, on, on one level yeah but also it is it's just turn like left but but better. actually happening yeah, things are actually happening <laughs> um, the and then all the russell um, fans are screaming <laughs> how dare you Bill say and- that this moffat trash is anywhere near as good as turn left my um, favorite one but i do like i do like i do like this episode for like bill and her relationship with the doctor um in it in the first episode and like because she does it to save him he needs his sight because that's right he gets stopped because he can't b- p- poke in a number like he can't see yeah the he th- can't see the numbers that's that is such a fun little i'm still blind i'm still blind yeah um, if the monks came here i would let them enslave us as long as they can as long as they provide free jello pots. As long as they can get London Grammar to perform. No, that's what Bill does. That's what, <laughs> they're, in, they're in this one. Oh! 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 Silly me! <laughs> they weren't in. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. They no, weren't in right. the other one. <laughs> the uh, but the the lie the land the conclusion where Bill saves it's the world. It's a very odd remembering. two part, isn't it? Is it? Odd. Because it's so linked with what we've just been seeing. Because he's blind. Because you can't go into this on his own. Because the yeah. fact that he's blind is from oxygen. Yeah. The fact who the hell are these monks things? Yeah. Uh, that's from extremists. extremists. <laughs> Yeah. And then what's well, the master doing in the vault? You don't oh, even you you won't thing. even fully yeah. know who Nardole is if you haven't yeah. seen Husbands of River Song <laughs> <laughs> or the Mysterion one. Yeah, yeah, or at least that one. Yeah, because that's what I think the problem is between him is like I don't know where this guy's come from, Matt Lucas. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been watching it. Yeah. And it's like no, he literally does come from nowhere. He does just sort of Moffat pop up. does explain where he comes from in this one at the start of it. <laughs> Because it? it's Missy's execution and oh, Nardo right, comes yeah. over and he's like, hello. That's right. And he's sort of like, hi, guard. But he's in Husbands of River Song. Yeah, I know he is, but he's not with the Doctor uh, at the end of the episode. He's not like, can I come travel with no, you? No, he isn't. That happens at the beginning of this one. one. Yeah, my yeah. bad. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, uh, Bill saving the day by remembering her mum felt a little bit like, it was a bit Moffat. 
Love Saves the Day again. It's a bit like Amy Pond s- shitting out the doctor by remembering him. Yeah. Something blue is something borrowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that melodrama. Yeah, I don't mind it no. because it kind of makes it's it's sense. A, it's a decent two part and it. like it's so well performed. Yeah, it is. I, I don't even mind. I like. I'm so into the whole like, you know, dystopian England like kind of world that they create and I'm just like proper on board with it yeah so and then them really sneaking like into the base and stuff is yeah. really satisfying yeah yeah and then the doctor and then and they're just you like you genuinely this small can't rebel predict group. what's going to happen no it, it, so it's pretty it, out yeah. there it feels really funky and again it's quite distinct and it's it's a little bit turgid but not too much <laughs> you know it's <laughs> like it's really like Mar- the word turgid. turgid yeah Moffat's just got it tighter you know he's figured out how to m- make things work and like actually this is the season, really, where I think Moffat actually well, figures out consistency. He, he does. He fully does, because Missy's in this a bit. Yeah. And she's perfect. Mm. But it's not overrun with her shit. No, like, no, she's no. just a very small part of it. And then when we lead into the next one, can I... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Empress, Empress of, of Mars. Mars. Missy's she's not in, in it. it. <laughs> Looks no, like that's I... her there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. She's the Ice Queen. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, because they okay. just save the day in the pyramids. But you stuff. really like this one, don't you? I love Empress yeah. of Mars. I think it's really fun. <laughs> I think it's, it's super. Just skaters. It, it might be. <laughs> it would it probably make sense if it was because skaters. To me, I think this has I got a really great sense of like conflict. It's like these Victorian. <laughs> what is it like? <laughs> <laughs> Victorian men. Yeah, these Victorian like soldiers and an ice warrior, and an yeah. ice warrior on Mars, <laughs> and like that's already I'm such a, a weird concept. Because for me, I think. Like I think that's so far I'd out. Probably but I think give it a five. Really? Yeah. Because to me, I think this is so far out. But I think they really make it like work. They like justify how these guys are here, why they're there with an ice warrior. Like they travelled up with him to get, and they're like, we had to discover and conquer for the queen, which is funny. And you're like, yeah, all right, you would do that probably. And then the 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 Martian is all like. But he's like really, it's a new type of Martian who's like likable. He's not a destructive guy. And then you get the queen, the Empress of Mars, the you know the ice. She should ice have been a Spider queen. Woman. And I, <laughs> well, you know, but I do like her in that vein yeah. though. She's like, I am the queen, and yeah. she has that gun that makes people go into balls. She, doesn't she really? Oh yeah, that is fun. That is fun. She right? really likes Bill, and she really yeah, likes Bill. Yeah, She's yeah. like, you're a strong, and yeah. uh, like, and then the whole thing is the Doctor running diplomacy with two really mm. like inclined for violence. <laughs> people one side coming from earth and being like pathetic and like really egotistical and the other being super powerful they want but gold they don't want like gold they're just something. like looking yeah, for treasure yeah, yeah. for the queen <laughs> they're so stupid um and like um and and then i think the stakes are really amped and actually when it goes serious i think that transition works so where well, you have the man who feels insecure about himself and he, he gives himself up for like death basically and so many of the other people have died and they've sort of turned against their old captain and that all builds up really so nicely do you prefer this or cold war uh, that's hard to say i really like cold favorite war. ice warrior stories cold war i do prefer cold war a bit but i do like this like considerably like only a little bit more do i prefer cold war and that's only because cold war's like ah like really gets high energy <laughs> and this isn't quite that but it's the doctor doing diplomacy with like the ice warriors which uh, to me this is like the best kind of throwback to classic who it's almost like it really captures the yeah, quite nuts yeah, yeah it really captures that essence of classic who it looks so classic who but actually the narrative is complex enough that it works is as a modern episode really nicely so i actually think it's like a well rounded episode it feels really satisfying and he gives himself up for death and then he ends up becoming you know the because the ice warriors have only just come back as a race they were like in sleeping so it's yeah. like the reintroduction of them into the universe and it's just nice man Where does, how does it end it, so it ends with him staying on mars to become um you know the uh, the sort of uh the interpe- he he oversees the relationships of like the oh, ice warriors right. and the humans i think or as they go into mars they needed like they need like a speaker basically and he was going with them to do that and then all the soldiers, I, I think all the soldiers died, but I'm not sure. Great. Or a lot of them did. There was a nasty one who definitely died. Yeah, but it was he really did good. Die. Yeah, it was he really got good. Sucked into and, the I, ball. and I like that there's like a nice ice warrior who gets them. And then I think it really develops the ice warriors as a race and as a culture. And I like that about it as well. The ice warriors are no longer just big warmongering things. They're, mm-hmm. they're kind of, they're, they're well, they're wolfy yeah. in a yeah, good way. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, I think definitely worth a watch. I think you should. Yeah, it's maybe good. I'll give it another shot. Yeah, give it another go. And Capaldi's okay. great. We go eaters of light. Uh, uh. Now this is 
I can't remember. The, this so thing. the be- the thing that I really like about this, and this is the only reason why I think it has a five, because everything else about this is bland. The monsters shit, the environment is shit, the sets aren't that good. But Bill chilling out with a whole group of Romans is really entertaining. I can't remember this. One. Do you not? I cannot oh, remember. She, there's like a whole bit where like Bill's with I the Romans and it's really like I was, charming. I was looking at it for editing and I was like. I do not remember. I was like, I don't, I don't even know if I've seen it. So it, really, oh well, maybe we should watch. No, it. I think we try. We we. I we think we did it, see it. Yeah. We did see it. No, we did see There's it. There's like a weird like space dog going around, and it's like and, yes, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's all these like there's these Scottish warriors. Do you know what? It really reminds me of this. this it reminded me of the Viking one. episode, which is why. No, I it was, really reminds me of this one with Amy. I can't remember what exactly it is, but there's a one with Amy which is really similar to this. Where there is, I think it's the one with the little vampires of Venice. No, this little creature coming out the mouth. It's like, like I want you. Are you sure you're not thinking of a Star Trek episode? No, no. <laughs> Star Trek video coming soon. Ah! <laughs> Season four is a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> Next generation. Top five. Yeah. Um, Captains. Yeah, it's not that great though. But uh, Bill, Bill is so there's particularly a dog good at going it. around, killing people, and there's something to do with a portal. They are they're arguing, aren't they? About because Capaldi thinks he knows more about Romans. Oh yeah, that is might that be in one this one. one. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, this is off memory, and the bad ones are harder to retain. This is a really bland one. It's very bland. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> Skeep. Yeah. The world enough and time. Uh, the Doctor falls Muppet. now. This does a good finale. Look yeah. at him. He's got Cybermen. He's got two Masters all in one. He's got some cool sets. He's got some cool costumes in it. He's got s- some Capaldi monologues in here. He's got some good old deconstruction just of Doctor Who. Just be kind. Of Doctor Who. That's all. Just be kind. <laughs> it's so good. Deconstruction of Doctor Who at the beginning. Yeah. She's like, hello, I'm Doctor Who. I like that. Big yes, yeah, that. Missy coming in pretending to be His real dog. name is Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. funny. It's yeah. really, really funny. Because <laughs> it was Russell who made the whole, like, you told you said you told me your name uh, yeah. like my name that's really important to me <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. it's like actually, it really shouldn't be that important it no. should be like this big secret about what his real name is yeah yeah um it's great um and the you know uh, bill Moffat, becomes a cyberman for this real. is like the best proper cyberman episode because like making bill a Cy- it was just like a much more like intimate insight and the cybermen come off so much more terrifying my problem with pain it. Pain. Pain. So my good. problem with it is similar to Dark Water. You don't give the Cybermen like a leader. Yeah, it's a little bit <laughs> who's running the, it's it the master again. Yeah, it's I hate it when again. the Cybermen are just like foot soldiers. Yes. I much but I like the way race. they look and the way they sound. Um But they are just big metal like, soldiers. Give, Nightmare and Silver, like just to go back to Nightmare and Silver, which by the way is sick. <laughs> um, <laughs> The doc, the, Matt Smith becomes a cyber leader and yeah. he becomes the antagonist. And yes. That's fine. Yes. Because at least it's the Cybermen yeah. who are the antagonist. Yeah, he is the leader of the Cybermen 50 50, you mm. know, and that's cool. But yeah, it's the stuff that isn't quite the Cyberman stuff that really is the best part of this because it's yeah. Bill Bill in the city, like in underneath. With John Sim in the John Sim in the weird makeup and the two ends <laughs> and going the time a difference, time, yeah. Um, which is really interesting and plays on stuff. The interior of the ship with the grass and the sort of stuff like that. It does divulge into being a bit action y, but the good stuff with that is Bill dealing with being a Cyberman and how hard that is and you know that's really hard, and they what don't make the Cyberman look and turning, appealing. Turning companions into Cybermen with Capaldi's yeah. particularly. I don't know. Oh no, I'm a Cyberman now. Uh oh. It kind of works with Bill. It works. He yeah. did it much better than with Danny Pink. Yeah, he yeah. did. Um, and it's it, really sad. It, it does feel really sad, and I think it's a really great like send off to the Doctor when he's like fucking dying in the middle of this field, and it's like fuck it, it's just depressing. It's just yeah. really sad. I love the, Bill's mas- the ending of the Master as well. Moffat really does. Yeah. End his like show really well, yeah. I think, because Making he's like master. he's made everything end. Yeah, the everything's master, done now. <laughs> the master also wants to fuck himself. I know, or which herself, I really like. Yeah, uh, which is really good and makes total sense. I mean, sense. why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that the master kills himself is yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, yeah. really brilliant. Missy turns John Sim into her, and then he kills, <laughs> he kills her. She always knew that. Really good. What's happened to the master now? 
Are we going to see Chibnall do a master? If so, who do you think they get to play it? The master. Um, and what gender do you think the master will be? The actor of Arya Stark. Me, I'm me. I'm me. Look at my face. I am me. I don't know. Who would you cast? Kenneth as Branagh. I reckon they get Kenneth Branagh to be the <laughs> that master. That would be awful. No, it'd be sick. I am the master. What if they get the guy who plays Tywin? Lannister. <laughs> Charles Dance. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Acting alongside Jodie Whittaker. <laughs> I reckon it'll be fine <laughs> if the script is good. Is it'll be fine if the script's good. Anyway, this episode is good too. Yeah, is there this anything else sick. to say? Yeah, I mean, like the two masters is good. It doesn't feel like it doesn't feel as satisfying as maybe I'd like it to. Maybe they don't get enough scenes together, or maybe the the scenes aren't resolute enough the scene's just satisfying between, to the me. scene between just missy and the master i like it's i was com- so shocked though yeah we yeah like, they, they, i did was not shocking. see it coming no, no, anyway i was like how the hell did i not hear about this as well <laughs> that shit was bonkers yeah that it shit was, was proper was mad, mad and then the second episode just starts with him being tied up and them just like goofing yeah that's good ages. So yeah. I'm like, and, I, and I do really like the cybermen designs i do think and they look the doctor disturbing changes it so that the cybermen will only upgrade time lords <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he got the got him, and um, Bill's been changed into a fucking Cyberman, and then there's all this shit like going on, on on the planet with Nardole being like, I'm gonna sacrifice myself. Yes, and then everyone dies. Everyone dies. Bill kind of gets saved a bit by Water Woman. By Water, Water Woman. Woman. But she is also is still that in the next step. No, it no, is at the end of this one, one she yeah. comes, and it, but she is still like dead as she well. She is still dead, pretty much. And I like, I like, I like that. that. It was a, keep her dead. Keep her dead. It was good. Um, it's a shame because she should have been a companion for longer. Capaldi should have stayed for longer. Yeah, yeah. Bill and Capaldi were sick. Were Capaldi wanted to stay for longer as well. Yeah. Chibnall should have kept Capaldi. That would have been amazing. That would have been great. Um, but this two part is good, and it is a really good finale. It's the best finale Capaldi gets. Yeah. So, well, no, I guess the season two finale is much better. Hellbent, Heaven Sent. I guess so, if that's the two part of Heaven Sent, Hellbent. They seem quite different. They are different, but yeah. that felt. I don't know, I prefer this as like an epic. Yes, as a, Moffat as a large epic. As a Moffat movie, yeah. I prefer this. Yes, no, I agree, because it's it just does, got so many the more masters things. masters killing themselves is really good. Yeah. Really like that. It's I really good. I like man. the whole constant master motif throughout the whole season. Mm. And then lastly, twice upon a time. Yeah, you really, really hate this one. I don't like it. No, I don't love it, but I don't think it's like awful. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so much of Doctor Who doesn't, though. I know, but it's not even fun. Oh, come on. Him and, you know, the, the guy playing William Hartnell. I would much prefer really good... him with Paul McGann. All right, yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. But with what we have, it's a two-doctor story. So you've got, you know, two doctors. I guess, yeah, okay. Well, and you've got the first doctor. I like doctor. David Bradley. He's really well cast. they don't get him to do anything. But all his... He's pointless. All his He's just is, shoved in. Like, it's oh, not even like the story needs him I to I know, be but there. we know Moffat like, had to rush this. Like, he didn't want to... <laughs> he wasn't prepped for a Christmas episode. And I'm just saying, like, with what the guy pulled together, I thought it was okay. And there's, like... It's an interesting episode because it's not... It's the Doctor perceiving a threat where there isn't one. And understanding that and coming to terms with the fact that he hasn't doesn't have to fight a threat, I think is kind of interesting. I like his own speech before he regenerates. But that should have been at the end of the other episode. But that also is the uh, speech that he gives Clara just as he's like um, uh, erasing either his or her memory. Or does he just reuse it? Cool, sort of. There's loads of parts of it that are the same. Oh, well. But like you said he was Cap- rushed. Yeah, he was. And Capaldi performs it really nicely. Um, Bill comes I just, back I just like, uh, in they're a weird in way. The snow, well, they're in Mon- they're in Mondas. Mon- Mondas? I, I, is, is it Mondas, Mondas that they're in? I don't know. It's the tenth planet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then yeah, yeah I think so. Um, yeah. So he's there. There's there's a soldier played by Mark Gatiss because we just we needed more Mark Gatiss in Doctor Who, and instead of being like Lazarus, what are you doing here? I thought you invented the machine that makes you go younger. Why are you a soldier now? Yeah. Why are you related to Brigadier now? Oh, you're just such no, a... No, because Moffat <laughs> tried to make it make sense when Capaldi came back. Yeah, but so, come on. Okay. I don't know. I think it's and okay. Then, 
Yeah, and then I like, I like no, and then and then he's all like. It's just all filler. It feels like it's I, entirely I, filler. I just, I think. Where's the meat? The twelfth and the first are good. They yeah, are. Yeah, they are. But then, time crash. The short that like Moffat wrote <sighs> with Peter Davison and David Tennant is also fun. It's equally as fun as this, but this is like yeah, a and that is that forty-five time minute. Cra- time crash is like a five out. Of 10. You were my doctor. <laughs> oh come on, this is better than time crash. This is a bit better than time crash. There's some fun sets in here as well, like fun weird What's locations. Set. Uh, I like the the castle with all the memory people. Yeah, it's all right. See, it's all right. Yeah, um, I don't know. It just uh, feels like a so four. There's something that I liked. There's another thing that I like about it in the way that the, that they bring back Bill. Um, and the doctor sort of coming to terms with that, that this is like a simulated person, but it's like got every aspect to her, but it's a simulated version of her, but it is her. Um, it gives it this really dystopic, like sci-fi distance, which and I thought was quite, I just quite, think it's quite it's well Moffat's achieved. Last episode, I'm like, end on a banger, mate. Yeah, but he did end on a banger before. That last yeah, episode is a bit of a banger. It's Chibnall's fault for not writing this. Yeah, he didn't want to do a Christmas episode. But he's yeah. Bloated. It is a five out of ten. It's just forgettable. Yeah, I know. It's a bit. Of, it's just a bit of a shame. Yeah. But like, I, I understand you can enjoy it in yeah. places. But uh, yeah, it's just a shame that the, they didn't make the first Doctor an actual part of the story. And I do love that the Doctor just going, oh, all right. You know, he's just fine. We'll do one more. Like, he's <laughs> so exhausted. He just wants to die. He's like, <laughs> overlived his time well, span, his lifespan. Yeah, that's it's... what Moffat does. And then after this, he writes a Doctor Who book. You're I not know. done yet, Yeah, mate. you love it. You love Who. You um, can't get out now. But, uh, and I love, uh, because also when you compare it to Matt Smith's finale, his Christmas special is so yeah. good. Yeah. Compare it, compared to Twice Upon a Time. Because it's like, this wouldn't have needed that much editing. No. Like, it would have need, would have needed, it just needed a little bit of a like, okay, how about we repurpose one of the first Doctor's companions and make it about them, or like mm. instead of this random World War One? Because they just wanted to do this the football game shit. Yeah, that's all he had. But that that was touching when they, that scene kind of. Works. I cried my eyes out. <laughs> anyway, season six ten, point six seven. point seven. It's Capaldi's it's compar- it's best season. Bloody brilliant season. Bloody brilliant Doctor Who action. What more do you want in your life? It's sick, man. It's his best season because it's very, very consistent. And actually, like, if you if you want something that, you know, if you want the easiest season to sit through from beginning to end, it is this one. It doesn't have the best Capaldi moments in it. No. But it's got uh, some of the most interesting Capaldi stories and some of the best Capaldi stories. If you just and haven't really seen great. any of this season, you're really missing out. Just binge the whole 10th season. Then it's work pretty your way easy. back. Yeah. That's what I would say. Work your way back. Yeah, because it season nine is difficult. It's a difficult at one. first, and then but it heaven gets sent is great. Yeah, and then work your way back. You know, for season eight, watch, listen for sure. Listen's a bloody classic. That's a banger. Uh, yeah, but the Capaldi, he should have been here longer. He was. He's so perfect to play the Doctor. He's the best Doctor. He is so good at every single Doctor scene. You can take any script from any episode of Who, yeah. and give it to Peter Capaldi, and he will do as good of a job. Definitely. No, yeah. As good of a job as Tom Baker. I'm saying it. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, Cavalli's better than Tom Baker. Oh! <laughs> oh, controversial. I'm going to be Baker. a bit more controversial and say that he's actually better than Peter Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> no! Take it back! But not as good as his rabbit. Not as good as Peter <laughs> Davidson's rabbit, which he ended up eating. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll be back. Special... Well done, Alexander. If you're still, if you are watching this, but you're Can probably not. But if you want to get your own one of these, and you're sad you didn't win, you know where to go. Nitpicks. Primark. No, nitpicks.co.uk. They're not in Primark. Not yet. <laughs> like and subscribe.